on JG9 Live. Spring football is officially back and we kick things off with a battle between the two defending champions. In one corner, the Birmingham Stallions, winners of the USFL in back-to-back -back seasons, building a spring football dynasty, but this time with a new quarterback as Matt Corral makes his competitive pro football debut in the comeback story of the year. In the other corner, the Arlington Renegades, who stunned everyone last season by winning the XFL championship and are led by one of the best spring football quarterbacks of the decade, Luis Perez. Battle of the Titans for the first game in UFL history. Stay tuned to find out who wins this one. Let's try that again. All right, everybody, welcome to JG9 Live. Spring football is officially back. Oh, man, it has been a long time coming. We are back. We are back. You can see the studio has got a whole new look for UFL season. You can see behind me right here, we got the helmets from every single team in USFL history. We've also got the helmets from every team from XFL 2001. XFL, the iteration from the 2020 season. We've got all the teams right now. We had to dig a lot, had to get a lot of... Uh, it, it was a lot of effort to get this studio the way uh, it is right now. But we do have the setup right now for this game between the Arlington Renegades and the Birmingham Stallions. Arlington, defending XFL champion... Remember last season, not the best team going into the playoffs, but then they got Luis Perez, who was on Las Vegas last season, and then they went on a giant, giant run. And then for Birmingham, back-to-back -back seasons as the champions, although the first year, Jamar Smith, the QB, second year, Alex Magoo, and this year, Matt Corral, Jamar Smith being the third quarterback. Now, you're probably wondering, wait a second, what? Where are the graphics? Where are the graphics that we are showing this season? Um, where's the scoreboard? Where's everything? Where is everything? Um, let's unveil it right now because we got a new look for UFL season. We got a new look. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the stream look for the 2024 UFL season. Here we go. Here we go. How about that, folks? How about that? Oh, man, this took a long, long time to set up. But we got a new, new look for the UFL. I think you guys are really, really going to like. So, first off, thank you so much for tuning in. This is play-by-play -play and color commentary on the game. We got both the games taking place today. We got Birmingham and Arlington. And then on top of that, later today, literally right after this game... We will be doing the game between the St. Louis Battlehawks and we are going to be doing the game between the Battlehawks and the Michigan Panthers. Now, before I start, I just want to say really quick shout out. Uh, but before that, WV, you are gifting a membership and Connor Aker is getting the membership. So as a member, you get a lot of cool perks, including your name at the end of each video. You also get on top of that, your name that's scrolling on that, on that, um, on that bar. You get that. So... Thank you so, so much. Let me get your name in there. Hang on. Get your name in there. Yeah, I think this looks a lot better than the NFL one last year, which is also, which is, um, I'm really, really happy about that. Um, hang on. Let me move this over. There we go. All right, so I should also note that if you are a member, you get perks including emojis that you can drop, and we have for UFL season the emojis of every single team in the league, so you can show your support for anyone. You can show your support for anyone right there. Yeah, no, we definitely definitely upgrade the graphics just a little bit. Definitely upgrade the graphics. I spent all night working on... 
working on this setup. Um, that's why there was no video that came out today. But there will be a video coming out tomorrow on something Vikings related. If you, if you saw my Twitter, you probably have an idea of what it is. Um, but thank you so much for the donation, W viewer. And of course, we always have the rest of the crusty the clown emoji. Uh, that ain't going anywhere. That was never going anywhere. So. Thank you so, so much. I should note, I should note before going, uh, what I was going to say was that all these helmets I got online at various places, but there was one problem. There was one problem. And that was the fact that they don't make XFL 2023 helmets. No, no cold. No cold. Um, not sure what it is, but no cold. No, I feel fine. I feel fine. Not sure. Um. I definitely noticed there's something in the voice, but so XFL 2023, they don't make them. That's why there's the defenders helmets, the 2020 version, uh, battle Hawks pretty much had the same helmet, but renegades, same thing. So that meant there was no Brahma's helmet. There was no Brahma's helmet anywhere that you could buy online. So one of my followers, Wiley Nash, um, you can go follow him on Twitter. He actually made me a custom Brahma's helmet. Which is that. That you cannot buy anywhere. There is no Brahma's helmet online that you can buy anywhere. Um, that is custom made. So, shout out to Wiley Nash. You, you made the studio tie together and everything. Um, Las Vegas Renegades from 2001. That is Las Vegas, yes. Yes, that is the Las Vegas helmet from 2001. Yeah, we got all the XFL helmets. USFL 1980 over here. Behind me is XFL 2020. We got the Tampa Bay Vipers, we got the Seattle Sea Dragons, New York Guardians, and the Los Angeles Wildcats. And then we got more USFL helmets, and then these are the current teams in the league with an XFL and a USFL helmet. And the two teams that are playing in the game, it's nice, I can just take this out, and then for the next game, we'll do St. Louis and Michigan. Vote in that poll, who do you think is going to win this game, the Birmingham Stallions or the Michigan, or, I was getting ahead of myself, Birmingham Stallions or the Arlington Renegades? Let me know again. The Stallions led by quarterback Matt Corral. Remember him from Ole Miss? The Panthers quarterback that was drafted in the third round. Never played for Carolina. Then there was the whole thing in New England. And he did show up to camp for a few days. He got cut there. But he has come back. We didn't know his whereabouts about 12 months ago. And now he has apparently been lighting it up. Jamar Smith, the starting quarterback... Two years ago for Birmingham, and the guy that was projected to start before he got hurt last year, now the third string quarterback on Birmingham. And then on top of that, you got some really good offensive weapons. CJ Marable at running back. You got Jason Sternberg or tight end, maybe the best tight end in the USFL last season. This is going to be very, very interesting. This is going to be very interesting. Yeah, we do have the Maulers over here. So I should also note that any donations, um, I'll get to your question right away. Otherwise, I just try and go in the order that I see the questions. This chat is going to be flying. This game is on Fox. This game and the next game are on Fox. Vote in that poll. Who do you think is going to win this game? So, I should know we're just doing play-by-play -play color commentary on the games. And, yeah, it is good to be back. It is good to be back. So, let's see what we got today in this chat. Yep, UFL is back. I'm excited. It's almost like like, like season two is, is, is fun for me. Like, it's like, how far have we come? How far have we come? I remember, like, last year we did UFL or XFL slash USFL, and that was fun, but obviously we didn't have this. We did not have this last time, which I'm really happy about that we have this. I should also note prize picks. Um, use my promo code GATOR9, 100% deposit match up to 100 bucks, and you can see as one of the tickers on the thing, I've got my socials, I've got my UFL schedule, I've got all the members that we've got, and I've also got the prize pick odds that you can actually pick on right now by going to prize picks, uh, downloading the app, going on the website, hundred percent deposit match up to hundred bucks. It's, it's a really, really good app. Really, really good. And they've got UFL. They've got UFL bets, which is awesome, which is awesome. All right. Uh, soft on the NFL side for the hip drop tackle. I mean, look, I, I, I don't like the rule. I don't like the rule. <laughs> I, I think what they should do if they want to get the hip drop tackle out, because it's going to be impossible to officiate. I don't know how these officials who can barely do anything as it is right now 
are going to be able to officiate um, the hip drop tackle. I have no clue how it's going to happen. So what they should do, if you're going to get rid of it, just find people afterwards, after the fact. But I don't see how these referees are going to be able to call in no hip drop tackles. They don't know what intentional grounding is. And that's clear cut in terms of did he leave the pocket? Um, they don't know what roughing the passer is. And that's as clear cut as did the guy get hit after he threw the ball. It's crazy. Crazy. All right, again, this game is on Fox. All right, let's see what we got. Completely ticked off the Marlins' performance to start the year. Should I be? I think so. Pretty bad start. Yeah, you, you should be. 0-2? Not good. Not good. Especially last night. I will say this. I will say this. Remember, two games out of 162. Remember, a lot of teams, the Nationals in 2019, Braves, the Phillies, when they made the World Series, they did not get off to good starts. So, it's not the end-all be-all. But, yeah, obviously 0-2. It's about the worst way you could start. It's about the worst way you could start. Favorite team in the league? I do not have a favorite team in the league. No. It actually makes things better for me. I can just call it neutral. Call it right down the middle. Just enjoy the games, which is nice. NFL, it can be it can be stressful at times. It can be stressful at times. So I see Caitlin Clark getting a 4,000 points and 1,000 rebounds to go along with 1,000 assists. I don't. I don't see her getting to 4-1-1. One, one. I, don't, I don't see it. I'm not sure Iowa makes the Final Four. I mean, I want them to. I want I want South Carolina, Iowa, but I I don't see Caitlin Clark um, getting four one one. Be incredible, she does. Incredible, she does. I'm glad to see you again. It's only helping me feel better. I felt terrible four days. Finally breaking today. Maybe that's why you potentially have a cold on my mind. Thank you so much, Jason. Yeah, hopefully you feel better, man. Hopefully you feel better. Oh, man, we are doing this. It is real. It is real. Up on Fox, Birmingham and Arlington. I should also say the stretch goals are still in play. 250. I'll wear whatever jersey you want me to for the next stream. Summer aside, driving us to Miami for the game. Have a great time at the game. Hopefully the Marlins finally get a win. And thank you for tuning in, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. It says you can watch the game. It is on Fox. It's on over the air. It's on over the air. Um, there are sites if you want to sail the seven seas. I will tell you that much. Uh, did I go to UF? I did not. No, I'm, I'm a diehard Gator fan, but I did not go to UF. No, just screw up a Gator fan. I, I got into UF for law school and I got into UF for undergrad. I just wasn't the right fit. Wasn't the right fit. I like the intra-league rivalry like when the AFL and the NFL merge. Yeah, this is interesting. This is very, very interesting. Um, I should know before going any further that the UFL, they, they've done a much better job than XFL, USFL last year on providing like media kits and whatnot. But there is no pronunciation guide. So if I put your name, please let me know. There is no pronunciation guide for these. I wish there was. No pronunciation guide on some of these. Um, but... I'm really excited to watch Matt Corral play. I really am excited to watch Matt Corral play. And then the next game, Michigan, last year you had the heartbreaking ending to their season in overtime against the Maulers, uh, that team right here. And on top of that, you've got um, AJ McCarron, Akeem Butler, maybe the best offense on paper in the UFL. Eganair with a tour. Thank you so, so much for that. Really appreciate it. Let me get your name in there. My final four is out. Iowa State, UNC, Houston, South Carolina. Ooh, that's rough. I, my, um, my champion's out. I had UNC. My champion is out. I also lost, who else did I lose? I lost Houston. I lost Houston. My final four, I had Connecticut, I had UConn, and I had uh, Tennessee making it to the championship. So that is still intact. That is still intact. So, you know, 2 out of 4 is not terrible compared to what some other people are having. I know USFL Division can finally play their teams in their respective home cities, but will the crowd come to watch their hometown team play? That's a good question. So, here's the thing. Houston is... All the teams from the USFL that are playing um, were playing in their home cities last year. So, Houston, it's the Roughnecks. It's not the Gamblers. So, they already were playing at... at um, they're already playing. They're good. Um, Birmingham, ticket sales are kind of slow for whatever reason. I'm not sure why. Ticket sales are kind of slow, Birmingham. 
Michigan, the ticket sales are pretty good. We'll see what happens. Obviously, Ford Field's not going to look great for UFL. They're not going to fill the whole thing, but it's looking all right. And then Memphis, obviously, Liberty Bowl, not the best of stadiums. So we'll see. Definitely the USFL division will be weaker than the XFL division in attendance. Obviously, DC, no issue. St. Louis, I mean, they're going to be phenomenal. How is it going? It's going well, J-Wex. Thank you so, so much. Uh, big first two days for the D-backs so far. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm loving it. I am loving it. Thursday felt like a dream. Thursday was like, what the heck is going on? It feels like this, like, I know it's a new season, but it feels like the ride has not stopped. This team feels fun. This team feels so much fun to watch. And I'm, I'm just in awe. Worst NFL season in terms of officiating, I would probably say, um... 97 was pretty bad. 97 was pretty bad. South Carolina women's team or the field? I'm taking I'm taking Scar. I'm taking Scar. Yeah, that, that was a crazy comeback by Indiana. I What were they down? 14 and they made it to a two-point game with one minute left. I'm still taking Scar against the field. At the end of the day, they are still undefeated. And I'm not betting against an undefeated team. Why can't they play the Rockies 162 times? <laughs> I wish we could do that. I wish we could do that. I'm excited for the Yankees series, but here, here's the thing. The D-backs are probably going to win about 70% of the games, maybe 75%, that Gallon and Kelly are on the bump. It's probably what's going to happen. It's really the rest of the rotation. Obviously, Montgomery comes in two weeks. I think his first start's going to be like April 19th, which someone asked about Montgomery. I'm thrilled. I'm absolutely thrilled. I mean, that might be the best one, two, three punch in baseball. At starting pitching, I, I'm thrilled about Montgomery. I didn't think we'd get him, but you know, credit to Kendrick. He is spending money. He is spending money. Mike Hazen's doing a great job as a GM, obviously. Kendrick's spending money this year for the first time. Like, this team is going to be good. This team is going to be good. But for the next three weeks, obviously, it's going to be tough. The next three weeks, because obviously Paul Seawald is out, so we don't have a closer. Um, Ginkle I love, but... He's not a closer. He's a setup man. We saw what happened as a closer last year. It wasn't the best. He's better in the 8th than he is in the ninth. But we'll, we, we will see. Brandon Fott, I have a lot of hopes for him. Um, Tommy Henry, I like him a lot. Ryan Nelson, not crazy about, but... Right now, there are some... Um, obviously, you get Rodriguez back soon. Hopefully, you get Montgomery back. So, once that happens, we're good. But the next three weeks might be a bit tough. Might be a bit tough. Any say to watch the games? It is on Fox. It's on over-the-air TV. It's on over-the-air. Um, you can stream East. I, 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 will, I will say that much. You can stream East. Who wins the divisions this year in Major League Baseball? All right, my picks, and I'm sticking with them after two games, even though the Astros are not doing well right now. My picks, I have the Orioles. I had the... Who do I have? The, did I have the Twins or the Guardians winning the Central? Who... Who did I have winning the Central? I, I put it on Twitter. Who did I have winning the Central? Let's all make sure I got it right. Um, Astros in the West. I had the Braves, the Dodgers, and the Cubs. Um, who did I have? Or no, wait. I had the Rangers winning the division, but I had the Astros making the making it to the World Series. That's what I had. So Rangers winning the division and the Twins. That's what I had. That's what I had. How's it going, Scorpion? Um, I've been having a pretty good game so far. I mean... I literally just woke up like 30 minutes ago, but um, I was getting this whole stream set up all last night. That's why there was no video that came out. Um, hopefully you like it. Definitely. We're, we're getting a technology upgrade. We are getting a technology upgrade for sure. In terms of new rules to be aware of for UFL, for those who, who don't know what the rules are, um, brief summary besides the regular of it being just NFL rules with some exceptions. Before that, Isaac comes with a tenor. Thank you so, so much. Let me get your name in there, then let me get to your question. Thank you so much, man. Really, really appreciate it. Really, really appreciate it. Um, let's see what we got. I know I, I missed a bunch of comments. I'm, I'm getting to everything I possibly can. Um, let's see what we got. Thank you so much. The Rockies will continue to get curb stopped until morale improves. That's the idea, at least for the next two weeks. At least I still have the Twins to root for. Also just realized match with both the XFL and the USFL champs. Yes. Yeah, battle the champions to start off. That's exactly how they planned it. They planned it so that game one would be XFL champ against USFL champ. Which is funny because Birmingham, you look at them as a champion. It's like, okay, the, the Stallions won the last two titles. Skip holds the best, maybe the best coach in the UFL. 
Um, they're building like a spring football dynasty. And then Arlington, you look at it, it's like, how the heck did they win last year? <laughs> Still feels surreal. I mean, because they squeaked into the playoffs. Like, they, they were not a good team, but obviously the second half of the season, a lot better with Luis Perez once he became the quarterback. He kind of fixed their problems. Definitely very different in terms of how these two teams were champions last year. So the rules for UFL, touchbacks, 25-yard line. The kickoffs, it's actually NFL rules. Oddly enough, the NFL went with XFL rules, and now the UFL is going NFL rules. <laughs> But the, these kickoffs won't reach the end zone. They're not going to be in from the 35. They're being from the 20-yard line. So kickoffs are from the 20, but they're NFL rules just 15 yards further back. Onside kicks, you don't have to onside kick. In the fourth quarter, you can do a fourth and 12 at the 28-yard line. Extra points, you can go for one from the 2-yard line, two from the 5-yard line, three from the 10, but no kicks on extra points. You're allowed two forward passes behind the line of scrimmage. Two feet inbounds, not one. I know XFL had one, feet inbound, one foot inbounds. Two feet inbounds this year for the UFL. Defensive pass interference is a 15-yard penalty unless it's intentional, then it's a spot foul. You get one challenge per game, but anything can be reviewed. And overtime, if it gets to that, it's a shootout. Three players from the five-yard line. Again, this game is on Fox. We have over 100 people in the stream. Thank you so much. UFL season is back, baby. Again, be sure to like and subscribe. Helps the channel out a lot. And we are here for every game. Week one, we're doing every single game. Every single game. Next week, we are doing three of the four games. The only game we're not doing is the night game on Saturday. The reason being is that I will more likely than not be at the final four. Because it is taking place in my backyard. So, um, I'll be there. But next week, we're doing three out of the four games. We're doing just about every single game this season. Some exceptions. Uh, the Saturday of the NFL draft, I won't be doing the game. But... Um, for the most part, we're doing every single game. We're doing every single game. All right, let's see what we got. Yep, good to hear that music again. Good to hear that music again. I missed it so much. I missed it so much. Dumbest sports controversy of the 2020s. Mine would be the time people thought the AFC and AFC Championship was rigged, despite no proof on it. I mean, people think everything's rigged. People think everything is rigged. I mean, people thought that the Super Bowl this year was rigged. Um... So that was pretty dumb. Um, the dumbest sports controversy of the 2020s. Um, I mean, anything with rigged is, is, is pretty dumb. Anything with rigged was pretty dumb. Um, the Kayla Williams nails thing is pretty dumb. The Kayla Williams nails thing, like he like he spent time with his family after the loss. Like that's that's pretty dumb. Well, you dumb decisions for UFO games. If it applies, oh, you know it. Who wins the UFL title? Um, I'm not... It, it, it's it's tough for me because on one hand, you can't bet against Skip Holtz. Um, but I just don't know with Matt Corral. I have no clue. I have no clue what to expect with Birmingham's offense with Matt Corral. The safest pick is St. Louis. The safest pick, you got AJ McCarron coming back. You got Akeem Butler. So you got maybe the best offense in the league. I'm not crazy about Anthony Beck as a head coach. I ranted about him a lot last year. But I would, um, I would pick St. Louis right now. I would pick St. Louis. DC, um, D DC is a tough one because he lost Abram Smith. He's out for the season with a torn ACL. So that that's a big blow. That's a big, big blow. All right. Where are my World League of American Football lids? Oh, man. I, I was thinking of just going all out and going like CFL USA, World League of American Football, um, NFL Europe, um, Obviously, they can't all fit on camera, and it would cost a lot of money. Yeah, my, my guess is St. Louis. But you never know. You never know. We have a better gauge than last year of who is going to um, be good. But my early preseason pick would be St. Louis. If I had to guess, I would say St. Louis, and I would honestly say Arlington as the two teams from the XFL to make it, and then the two USFL teams. I would say Birmingham, and I would say... Oof. That, that one's tough. That one's tough. I would say Birmingham, and I would say... Probably Memphis, but that's that's tough. That's tough. Who's your NHL MVP? Who's Rob McDavid or McKinnon? I would probably go with... Um, I'd probably go McKinnon, but that's tough. You can go either way on that one. You go either way on that one. 
Mark one 1976 with a fiver. Thank you so much. Okay, donations coming in hot right now. Really, really appreciate it, man. Really, really appreciate it. Oops, wait. That's the wrong, um... That's the wrong, um... It's the wrong place. Here we go. I'm trying to get used to this new setup. There we go. So, what do we have here? Mark Juan, love your collection of 1980s USF Homes behind you. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, this was, um... There were some really good websites out there. Really good websites that hooked me up. It's funny, the Jacksonville Bulls home I've had since 2006. I got that when I first went down to Jacksonville. It was a really nice sports store there. Yeah, I'm leaving the defenders out. Like, I don't know what their offense is going to look like without Abram Smith. That's really what it comes down to. It, I don't know what their offense is going to look like without Abram Smith. I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know what the offense looks like now that you lost the best running back in the league. Yeah, but he's about to cut a 45-minute promo. He's cutting something, all right. I smell what the rock is cooking. I don't have the audio on, but I can smell what the rock is cooking. I can smell it. Yeah, I got... Two Mauler's helmets. That one is from Tywar Collectibles. The rest are from, I think, Joe's Sports Memorabilia. So we got the original Mauler's helmet, and then we got the black and yellow Mauler's helmet. And we have the original Birmingham Stallions and the original Memphis Showboats. All right. I'm going to close the poll right here. 63% of you riding with the Stallions. The USFL champs to win this one. Your yeah, problem with no glass is that it just, it would, um, yeah, anti-glare, yeah, the, the problem is that, like, I can't do no glass, because I, I, I showed you what happens, um, before. Thoughts on, oh, NASCAR YouTuber Black Flags are being called plagiarism. I did not see that. I did not see that. I don't watch, like, a whole lot of NASCAR content. I did not see that. Um, obviously, plagiarism is bad. Obviously, I mean, I did a whole, whole video on that. <laughs> plagiarism is bad. Um, I did not see that, though. All right, here we go. We're going to start this off. It is going to be Birmingham kicking off to Arlington from the 20-yard line to start off the UFL season is officially underway. Field at the 5-yard line. Take it down to the 20. 25. 30. Got some room to the 35. Start off with the bank. 40. 45. Going to the 50. Into plus territory at the 49-yard line. But there's a flag on the play. There's a flag on the play, so this one might be coming back. As it stands, 49-yard line. But we'll see where they mark it. As things stand, Juan Mangio, first personal foul faces on the kicking team. So add 15 yards, get those flag emojis out, and... The Renegade is going to start this drive at the 34-yard line. Flag on the play. They're going to call it on number 23, Ricky Person Jr., the backup running back. So great field position for Arlington to start this one off. Oh, the Sea Dragons helmet? Um, it is on... Um, I don't know if that... Um, if you look up XFL 2020 helmets, um, I might be able to put a link in there when I get to commercial break. All right. Here we go. First down at the 33-yard line. Luis Perez in at QB. The running back, Davion Smith. The give goes to Smith, and Smith bottled up nowhere to go. Brought down on the play by Tillman. It's a second and 10. Big problem for Arlington last year was their inefficiency in the running game. Smith, their leading rusher, 3.17 yards per carry. Now, I will say, for whatever reason, XFL, it was tougher to run the ball than the USFL. Yep, game just started. Game just started. All right. Second and 10. Perez in the gun. Four wide. Two on the near side. Two on the far side. Perez drops back. Slant route ball is caught at the 27-yard line. Will be a gain of about six yards there. Catch there made by Tyler Vaughns. Last year, second leading receiver on the team, 31 catches, 302, and a touchdown, but there was a flag on this play. So some dirty laundry early on. Why XFL 2001 fail? Terrible quality football. That's really why I failed. Promotion was off the charts. The problem is that the football actually kind of sucked. So this call is as it stands, gain of six. But we'll see what the flag is. Personal foul. 
on the offense, personal foul on the defense. They're going to offset, and we're going to redo... Or no, it was after the play. It was after the play. So, play stands. Fouls offset. Third and four, ball the 28-yard line. That should make it third and three. We'll see if this is four down territory. Perez, three wide, one on the near side, two on the far side. Man in motion is Burnett. Play action, looking in the flat. That ball is caught. Does he have enough for the first down? He does. Needed three, got about four. Nice balance there to go out of bounds after picking up the first downs. Deontay Burnett on the grab. First down at the 24-yard line. Oh, the... Yeah, I didn't get the autograph helmet. I did not get the autograph helmet for the stats. They get any UFL autograph helmets. The two Washington Federals, they made two of them. They made a, a white and a silver. So I was like, you know what? I need to fill this out because I don't want any NFL helmets in here. So let's get both. Let's get both. All right. The give goes to Smith. And once again, Smith not doing a whole lot there. Brought down on the play by the cornerback, Mark Gilbert. Second and eight, ball the 22-yard line. What UFL team is the best logo? Ooh, um... I'd probably say Birmingham. They're going quick. They give Smith once again, powers his way down to the 15-yard line. Should be a game of about five. Brings up third and three, similar to last time. Last time they win the flat. Let's see what happens here. How many games do they play this season? Each team plays 10 games. So 40 regular season games in total, plus two playoff games and the, X and the UFL championship. Best uniforms? Ooh. I I also think Birmingham's just kind of clean. Birmingham's kind of clean. Well, Michigan, it's funny. Like, I didn't have to order, like, a Michigan U of, uh, like USFL helmet from 2023. It's basically the same thing. Perez, he loses the ball. Who's got it? It's going to be Birmingham that falls on it. So despite the great field position that they gave up, Birmingham recovers, and this one is Mark Gilbert. That ball came out of Perez's hands. He got hit, and Birmingham will take over the 25-yard line. A great stand by Birmingham's defense. Perez feels the pressure. Hit on the play by Carlos Davis. Or Davis with the initial. Yeah, Davis with the hit. Gilbert with the recovery. And it's Birmingham ball at the 25-yard line. When we get back, 12-0-1 left. Now, the Stallions always played in Birmingham. The Stallions were the only team that played every single... Um, the Stallions were the only team that played every single season in Birmingham. They're the only team. Michigan played at home last year. Memphis played at home last year. But Birmingham was the only team that played every single thing. Are they calling the playoff games conference championships? I don't know what they're calling them. I don't know what they're calling them. I mean, it's really the XFL and the USFL divisions. That's really what they're they're calling it. How do I watch? The game is on Fox. The game is on Fox. We have 128 people in the stream right now. This is awesome. Thank you so much. I, I was always like, like wondering, okay, like, it's interesting with the UFL because it's like on one hand, obviously less popular than the NFL. But on the other hand, there's like no competition. How was that called in the pass? He lost control of the ball. He lost control when um, Davis said he was not in the forward pass motion. He was not in the forward pass motion. No, that, that seemed like a like a fumble. That seemed like a fumble to me. They'll review it, obviously, but that seemed like a fumble to me. So, like, you, ne you never know, because obviously, like, UFL games probably get around 1 million people. This one, probably 1.5, maybe 2 million people. Um, but, obviously, there's, like, no competition. Like, no Grassi. I don't think Perna's doing um, UFL streams. He, he does a lot of UFL content. I'm not sure he does streams. Yeah, good to have JJ9 football back. It, it is nice. It is nice to be back. It is nice to be back. So, we're going to see Matt Corral for the first time in a pro-competitive game. We have not seen Corral ever play a competitive football game at the professional level. Never played a down in Carolina. Never played a down in New England. There is no UFL Pro Bowl type game. Should there be? They probably lose money on it. Would make a whole lot of sense. Well, I use the new scoreboard for NFL season or is this UFL only? Um, we'll see how it goes. I mean, you guys seem to like it. I like it a lot. It looks a lot cleaner. Um, I think we're going to do it for the NFL too. Overtime, so no overtime tonight. No overtime tonight. The reason being is that the game will be over at 4 o'clock and the D-backs play at 5 and I'm going to the game. So, 
No overtime tonight, but there will be overtime tomorrow. Overtime will be a thing tomorrow. It will not be tonight, though. If you mean, like, overtime in terms of, like, the actual, um... Like, overtime shootouts? Oh, I love those. I love those. Yeah, last snap was a preseason game. Matt Corral. So, remember, last season, Birmingham, Alex Magoo was the QB. The year before, Jamar Smith. So, they're on the third quarterback in three years. But Corral, obviously, maybe the most high-potential quarterback in this league. First down the 24-yard line. Play action. Dumps it off in the flat to the tight end. Jay Sternberger, the former AM guy. He's got some room down to the 42-yard line. Gain of 18 yards on the play, and it's good enough for a first down. Starting things off nice and easy. Jay Sternberger, maybe the best tight end in the UFL last season. USFL, I should say. 33 catches, 517, 7 touchdowns. He was an absolute menace. That was a nice block there to set up the um set up the room 42 yard line they give this one goes to cj marable who gets the gain of one i should know also for birmingham besides the obvious storyline of matt corral bo scarborough who was huge for them in 2022 when they won the title he is no longer there he retired from football so you know the 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 fox bug for the ufl is clean i will say the fox bug it's better than their nfl bug I like it a lot. I really like it a lot. It's got, you got you see the challenge on there, that red box. You got the timeouts. I love it a lot. Second and nine. That ball is tipped at the line. Incomplete pass. Tipped on the play by Jamal Carter, the free safety, coming up. Third and nine. Yeah, I like the NFL scorebook that I had, too. Um, I figure, why not get a new look? I figure, why not get a new look? Yeah, this is the same guy that got hurt in the Sugar Bowl a few years back. Same guy. This actually is first start since the Sugar Bowl. Matt Corral deserves this chance. Caroline did him dirty after drafting him. He gets hurt. He comes back. Doesn't get a chance to start to prove himself. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, he didn't really help his cause with what happened in New England after. Yeah, this bug's clean. The MLB bug for Fox is terrible. It used to be good like five years ago. And then they changed it for some reason. 39. Over the middle ball is caught by Sternberger. Second catch of the drive for the tight end. Down to the 42-yard line into plus territory. First down on the play. Corral just zipped that one in there. Gave him about 17 yards. You know, it's it's a thing to speed up the game. From Ireland here, where is it we can watch the game live? Um, on Ireland? Ooh, that's a good question if you're from Ireland. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I would just... I would stream east. I, I would say stream east. Not that I can advocate for that, but... I would say stream east. Yeah, remember, clock rules in the UFL. Clock doesn't stop on equally passes. Handoff, gain of one. Down to the 40-yard line. Second and nine coming up. Tom Brady is not calling UFL games on Fox, no. No, that's not his contract. Birmingham will not get a another pro sports team of NFL, MLB, NBA, NHL. It's too small. The economy is not the best there in terms of the average median income. I wouldn't uh I wouldn't bank on it happening. If they were to get a team for MLB, I'd probably say they're American League. I think the the Braves would probably throw a fit. Second down. That is a pass that gets dropped, and I think that's intercepted, and it is dropped on the play by Dion Kane and picked off. So back to back turnovers to start off. This one, Darren Evans on the interception. Darren Evans had one pick last year. He's already equal that total here. It is going to be Arlington Ball. That one just dropped by Deion Kane. Kane last season, 16 catches, 182. Couldn't corral that one in. Pun completely intended with Matt Cor Corral. <laughs> It's a first down for the Renegades when we get back. 9.03 left. Bit of a sloppy start to start off, but defense is coming alive. Will the Lions and Niners get a Sunday game this year? Oh, they're going to get... Oh, when they play each other? I would say probably yes. I would say yes. What was Matt Corral's pick in 2022? He was a third round pick. He was a third round pick. If Matt Corral plays great this season, do you think he will get called to be a backup QB 
he won't be called to be a QB one, at least not right now. Um, but yeah, no, Matt Corral is very different from a lot of these other QBs in the league in the sense that he was highly touted as an NFL player and he never really got a chance in the NFL. I, I would say, um, I would say yes, he would absolutely get a, a chance in the NFL. Absolutely. hundred percent, hundred percent. Because a lot of these guys were not like highly talented, like Garrett Gilbert, Luis, per or not Luis Perez, um, Ben DiNucci. They got NFL call-ups. AJ McCarron's a bit different. He was a veteran. Macrow's really the only QB of his kind. Even Alex Magoo got an NFL call-up with the Packers. He got a tryout last season, played in the preseason. Matt Corral, obviously, NFL teams don't really know about him, but they know that he he was good enough to be a third-round pick, so. Yeah, I think this has to be, by default, the biggest away crowd they played in front of. I think, by default, it's got to be. No, so the, the antenna is, like, it, it's not what it, um, it's not a traditional wall antenna. It's not a traditional wall antenna. The Rays move out of Tampa, they need to move to Jacksonville. Um, as much as I would love for that to happen, I don't think so. Obviously, I don't want Tampa to lose her team. But if they're going to move, it's going to be probably Portland or Charlotte or Nashville. Do you think this could be a preview of the UFL championship? I mean, I have both teams making the playoffs. I could see it. What's going to be really interesting is, for those who have not followed, remember last year, the Battle Hawks game where I was ranting and everyone was ranting in the chat? how the entire, like, third quarter destroying was just taking up the entire screen. We couldn't see the game. He is now the starting kicker of the Brahmas. Destroying is... So we see that on Sunday. He is the starting kicker on the Brahmas. All right, first down balls at the 41-yard line. Last strike for Arlington ended in a fumble. 2011 Jags receiving unit or 2021? Oh, easily 2021. 2021 at least give, gives you uh, Marvin Jones. At least it gives you Marvin Jones. And Agnew, at least. Plus, CJ Shark for, like, the first four games where he got hurt. Um, it's a terrible receiving unit, obviously, requiring La Laquan Treadwell and, and Tavon Austin. But, 2011, who you got? Mike Thomas, Jarrett Dillard, Chaston West. I mean, it's bad. Cecil Shorts when he was, like, terrible. First down, the 41-yard line. Two on the far side, two on the near side. Man in motion. Looks like Burnett. The give, it goes to Smith. Smith. Once again, bottled up. Nothing doing. A gain of maybe one on the play. Brought down there on the defensive line. Looks like there was Tillman and Damon Lloyd on the stop. Second and nine. Again, like I said, um, running the ball. Big problem for the Renegades last year. Smith, just 3.3 .3 yards per carry. 3.1 yards per carry, I should say. They were just about the worst rushing team in the league last season. Yeah, because Sim Oscar, he was more like special teams. He was more special teams. You know, Michigan is kind of isolated. Just imagine that. That's why they got rid of Seattle. That's really why they got rid of Seattle. It's so isolated. The travel distance would be a lot. Second and nine. The give. Again, nothing doing. Smith, nowhere to go. Tillman, he's been a menace today. Clogging up the middle. Third and let's call it eight. Again, you can see scrolling on the bottom of the screen all the over unders, all the odds. Again, use my promo code of Prize Fix. 100% sponsor up to 100 bucks. Promo code Gator9. Promo code is Gator9. You can see all of that. Third and eight. Perez in the gun. Three on the far side, one on the near side. Man on the near side is Tyler Vaughn's. Perez takes a snap. Birmingham sends five. Perez has time. Fires. Out route. Caught. First down at the 40-yard line. That is Deontay Burnett on the grab. Called a gain of 17 and a first down. I know Osgood, he was a good player. He just, he was special teams. He wasn't really, wasn't really a receiver. Burnett working on the out route. Chris Jackson on the coverage. And it's going to be first down at the 40-yard line. Chris does take a shot at the end. Clean shot, but does take a shot by Jonathan Garvin. And there is an injured player, so we're going to take a quick break. The injured player is the left guard, Chris Owens. And what's interesting about this 
You look at Arlington's depth chart, they don't have a backup guard. So someone's going to have to move over. Um, there's seven guys listed on the depth chart for Arlington on the offensive line. Seven guys listed. They don't have anyone on the interior. My guess is that Jake Lucina will now be the number 68, will now be the new left guard. Do you think destroying is overrated? Um, I mean, he hasn't kicked yet in the, um, he hasn't kicked in a game yet, so we have to see. It's an interesting, it's a cool story, I, I will say that. It's a really, really cool story. I mean, obviously he can kick, he kicked in college. Portland, will they get a UFL team? I mean, Portland would make a lot of sense for a team, but there's a few problems, though. Number one, far away. They're very far away, so... You got rid of Seattle for that reason. You probably couldn't do Portland by itself. Number two, um, number two is that the field is too small. Um, Providence Park, where the where the Timbers play, the field is not. Um, it, it'd be a tight squeeze. Corey Duncan, ten bucks. Thank you so so much, man. Thank you so so much. Really appreciate. It. Really appreciate all these donations, guys. Really really appreciate it. Since your favorite movie is Whiplash, it is, yes. Um, have I seen La La Land and have I seen Babylon? And if so, what have I thought of them? I've not seen Babylon. I've not seen Babylon. I did see First Man. That was really, really good. I did see First Man. La La Land I love. I love La La Land. I love... The soundtrack's great. Start a Fire is, is a phenomenal song. Um, that movie should have won Best Picture. That should have won Best Picture. If Justin Blackman actually played past 2013, would he have turned the boat into the goat? I mean, he made Chad Henney look serviceable. <laughs> he made Blaine Gabbert look like a world beater that preseason. You know, Blackman was incredible. He just obviously had issues. James Delaney with a 20! A $20 donation! Thank you so, so much, James! Dice has to go and tie with Mike Walker for the worst run of form in team history for the Premier League era. Yeah, I mean... Obviously, I get why they hired him. I get completely why they hired him because he did some good stuff at Burnley, but now, yeah, he's got to go. He's got to go. Speaking of things that have to go, I mean, holy cow, what is happening to Leicester, the championship? What is happening to Leicester? How do you bottle a 17 point lead in two months? How the heck do you bottle a 17 point lead? Hopefully, perhaps, is it Delaney or, or Delaney? I'm not sure how, how it is, but thank you so much for the 20, man. Really, really appreciate it. Really appreciate all the support, guys. Thank you so, so much. Really, really appreciate it. We got 140 people in the stream. Holy cow. Holy cow. Ancient City Dragons will be back. If they expand, I would say yes if they add some West Coast teams. But probably not next year. They're probably going to keep it a bit more centralized to keep down travel costs. All right, here we go. We are back in action. Man in motion. The give. This time it goes for the first time today to Letty Brown. And Brown... Gets down to about the 35-yard line. Bring up second and seven. What happened to Wayne Weaver? Was he any good? Yeah, no, Weaver was... I mean, Weaver did a lot of good things in Jacksonville. Obviously, he brought them in the team. He... Yeah, no, he, he was good. Weaver was good. He just got... He just wanted to sell. He also was not, like, the richest of owners. Like, he doesn't have the money that, that Khan had. Shoe Carnival's not the same as, as the guy that does the bumpers on the cars. All right, let's call it a gain of two, third, and six at the 33-yard line. You know, we all love Wayne Weaver. We all love Wayne Weaver. So third and three, about 6.20 left. Ball the 30, call the 31-yard line. Five wide. Out route. Caught. First down. Back to back. Third down conversions by Burnett. Moving to about the 26 yard line. First down. XFL Mount Rushmore. All time, I would probably say Tommy Maddox. He Hate Me. PJ Walker. And, um. Ooh, who else would I put on there? He definitely PJ Walker. Definitely, um. Tommy Maddox, definitely he hate me. And I would say, um, who else would I say for that? The game is on Fox. The game is on Fox. Um, would I say McCarron? I mean, it's tough. I, I, I don't know. What, it'd be tough to say McCarron because obviously they didn't make the playoffs last year. Did Arlington get a timeout in? They did get a timeout in before the delay of game penalty. So, 
They all have two left. Oops. The second greatest college coach of all time, I'd probably say Bear Bryant. I'd say Saban 1 and Bryant 2. What's taking so long for the NFL to get an 18th game? The CBA. It's really the collective bargaining agreement. It's going to happen as the next CBA. So 2029 is when the CBA expires. By 2030, we'll, we'll see an 18th game. So that's what's going to happen. If Oklahoma City gets a WNBA team, what should be the team name? So you have the Thunder for the NBA. So I would say Lightning. What about the Lightning? Oklahoma City Lightning. Why not? I mean, we've got um, like Phoenix Suns, Phoenix Mercury. So, I mean, you, you have that brand synergy. I, I'll probably say the Lightning. Yeah, I don't know what's up with this pinky. That is, that is odd. First down. Here we go. The give. Smith. Smith trying to dance with but gain of just three. Excuse me, that was not Smith on the run. That was Letty Brown, the backup running back. Letty Brown last year, 3.5 yards a carry, 179 yards. But again, nothing really doing for Arlington on the ground, just like last season. And if I want some Brazil game, Peacock, shut up and take my money. <laughs> Pretty much. $120 million. Second down. Oh, well, they telegraphed that play perfectly. Letty Brown on the pitch to the 20. That's more like it to the 18-yard line. Brought down on the play by Elijah Sullivan. Yeah, I think I have a pretty good idea of what your hometown is. <laughs> I have a pretty good idea of your hometown. I would be excited about this game. The hand got rid of my Maulers. Curse you, final boss. <laughs> Yeah, they were always going to get rid of the teams that didn't play in their own stadiums. I think the Mullers could come back, though. I think the Mullers could come back. Third and one. The give? No, the play is blown dead before. Flag on the play. False start. So back him up five instead of third and short. It's going to be third and medium. Question. Will the new Broncos units be thumbs up or thumbs down? I am not optimistic. Um, just because I'm not crazy about their logo as it is. And based on the tees, they're keeping the logo. Yeah, Christmas Day games are going to be streaming games. No, no, no. They're not going to be streaming games. They're just bidding on the rights for the games. They could be streaming, but they're not going to be streaming. Um, like, it's not, like, exclusively to streaming. I actually think that's the time where it would hurt the NFL because a lot of people spend Christmas at, like, their grandparents' house and they don't have streaming services or know how to access them. Third and six. Well, the 22-yard line, let's say. Perez, four wide. Drag route, ball is caught by Burnett, but this time nothing doing. They were looking Burnett's way just like the last two third downs, but right all the way was Damon Lloyd. Brings a fourth and four. And see if they leave the offense out there or if they just try the field goal with Taylor Russolino, who is one of the better kickers in the UF or the XFL last season. See, John Parker Roman was the best, but Taylor Rosalino, pretty, pretty good. 16 for 19 last year. Maybe the second best kicker in the league. I think he could get an, an NFL look if he has a good season this year. Bit of a high snap, but right down the middle for Taylor Rosalino. Rosalino is money. First points in UFL history, technically. Coming from Taylor Rosalino. And the Arlington Renegades. 3 0. Renegades get on the board on their second drive. Okay, so someone asked about where I got the XFL 2020 helmets. Hang on. The Sea Dragons helmet. Um, where... What was the website that I got them on? So if I can find the website. Is it this one? No, it wasn't that one. I might have gotten the last ones. I might have gotten the last one. I'm trying to... If I can find the site, I'll, I'll link it. But I think I might have gotten the last one. Um...
I want to swim. Was it this one? Hang on. Hang on. I might be able to help you over here. Here we go. Here we go. I'll give you the link if you want to buy the the helmets. Here you go. All right, I, I will um, see if I can get the link for those who do want to watch. I will see if I can get the link. Yeah, because I don't think anyone can, you can't put links in if you're not a, if you're not a mod or anything like that. Um, do they have you? They might not have UFO. Hang on. Could the alpha go to 20? Yeah, I think at, at some point, I think. And yeah, the game is on Fox, so it's on over the air. But internationally, I'm not sure. I might not be able to do it. Yeah, the Chase Field roof situation is... Yeah, it's not a safe roof. I'll put it that way. It's not a safe roof. We saw the leakage that happened at the World Baseball Classic. I would say um, you, the problem is that they can't close the roof with people inside. So the roof works, but they can't close it with people inside. So that's why I had that rain out on Monday during the, the spring training game. Yeah, if you some plays on Christmas, I'm staying home Christmas. Yeah, that's the way to do it. As long as the cowboy girls, I mean, boys don't play on Christmas, I won't have to be worried about football being on TV where I spend Christmas. Yeah. I hope the Jags don't play on Christmas, but based on how we ended last season, I don't think we have to worry about that. So that's good. <laughs> All right. Kicking off from the 20 yard line. This kickoff will be fielded at the 20-yard line. Line drive. You'll have plenty of room to go. 30, 35, got some space. Cuts outside to the 40, to the 45, and out of bounds at the 50-yard line. Nice return there on the line drive kick by Dion Kane, who had the fumble, or the, not fumble, but the, the drop catch that led to an interception. Redeems himself somewhat there. You know, it's funny. They, when they changed the kickoff rule, it was to try and get more people to go to the, um, cause they want to play it under and like they make it like NFL style to get more people to go to the NFL. But then the NFL changed their rule. <laughs> it's like, okay. First down corral. That is a high throw incomplete pass. Brings up second and 10. And he's on throw that jerseys? Nothing yet. Nothing yet. But so about the Christmas games. Um, with the Christmas games, yeah, Bidding's going to start at $50 million. I did a video on JJ9 News. Go check that out if you haven't already. I speculated that I think they're going to get $125 million for each of the games. I think that the, the networks that get it, whichever two do, it's going to be $125 million. Second down. Corral keeps it himself. Nothing doing. Nothing doing on that one. Devontae Lambert looks like he was in on the stop. Brings up third and nine. This is the life. Your live commentary in one tab. The fight pass stream on another. There you go. That's the way to do it, man. That is the way to do it. That is the way to do it. Very first memorabilia in my office right now. Ooh, that's a good question. I would probably say... Very first memorabilia that's like currently in the office. Honestly, I'd probably say the Jacksonville Bulls helmet and some of the XFL um, 2001 helmets. I got a sports store in Jacksonville in 2006. That used to be at the landing. Fires. Come back round. It's caught. First down on the play. First down there. A catch made by Benjamin Victor. His first catch of the season. It's a first down for the Stallions at the 38 yard line. Do I think the new NFL rule changes are ridiculous? No, because I I don't think they're ridiculous. Um, not like obviously the hip drop tackle I do, but the kickoff I advocated for that because you reduce injuries and you um you get kickoffs back to where they are. Handoff up the middle, he got a huge hole, and CJ Marable, one of the favorites according to many to win Offensive Player of the Year this year, it's a gain of about 13 yards and a first down, Birmingham just outside the red zone. You know, Clutch's good. The give once again to Marable. Marable gets down to the 21-yard line. Brought down by Stephen Jones Jr. 
I sure know if you're looking for former Jaguars in the UFL on Arlington on the defensive side, Brandon Rusnak, number 27. He is a former Jaguar. Arlington defensively, you might know he's number 42 on your screen. He's lined up right now on the um, on the left tackle, uh, Christian Deloro. That's Vic Beasley. That is former first round pick Vic Beasley. Second and six. Five wide Corral keeping himself. QB draw. He's got the first down. Then some Corral in the ten. Corral down to the nine yard line. Showing off the legs like Alex Magoo did last year for them. Brought down at the nine yard line. It's gonna be first single. Miles Dorn on the stop. First single at the nine. When we get back. Yes, who's back? How's it going, CT man? Welcome to the stream. We got a new look. We got a brand new look. Hopefully you like it. Hopefully you like it. If you don't, I have nothing to do with it. <laughs> More players get hurt on regular plays and kickoffs. Um, concussions, though, it, it wasn't. Concussions, the rate was, I think, 13%. And for regular play, I think it was 6%. So that's why they did I'm just turning on a fan really quickly. What type of season will Colorado have this year based on how they played the first two games? Not a good one. Not a good one. <laughs> um, not a good one. I, I, I don't think I'm, I'm going out on a limb by saying I don't think the Rockets are going to be that good this year. Oh, it's like that Boston, New Orleans, Portland spray or something. Yeah, that, it's a clean helmet. It's a clean, clean helmet. Simple, but effective. Honestly, I, I got the, the USFL lock cards. The old USFL had a lot of great helmets. And the ones that weren't great, they upgraded this year. Obviously, Birmingham Stallions are better now than they were back then. I mean, what, what is that? Like, really, let, let's, take, let's take a look at the, the old Stallions logo for a second. Let's do that. I mean, this... This horse looks like he's sagging. Like this, this is this horse looks like he's, like what is with the head, on this horse? What is with the head? What is with the head? Send me the set designers to the same employment line as the editor. <laughs> Do I have any plans to attend UFL games? No, I live nowhere near a UFL city, so the answer to that is no. I would have gone honestly if um the NFL drafts in Detroit. I would have gone if they played in Michigan at Ford Field. I would have gone that Sunday, but they don't. But they don't. Yeah, I'll shout at your... <laughs> if that is true, happy sixth marriage to your grandma. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to any UFL games. Because I, I don't live anywhere near a UFL um, team. So. If I did, I would. I'd support that team. But I just want to see some good football. Alright. The tech mobile music underneath. There you go. There you go. Yeah, so I put in the link if you want to buy those helmets. Um, oh, Colorado Buffs in football. Oh, oh, the Buffs in football. Oh, not Colorado Rockies. Oh, f Colorado football. I would say, look, I'm not crazy about Coach Prime. I'm really not crazy about Coach Prime. Recruiting class, not the best. Obviously, you got Sanders. But I'm going to say th I'll go 5-7. and seven. I'll go 5-7. and seven. Thoughts on the NFL changes to replay? I like that. I like the change to replay. The enforcement of fouls on change of possession plays. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with those rule changes. I really don't have a problem with, with those rule changes. Um, it's really the hip drop tackle that I don't like. Michael Piz with the five. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it, guys. Really, really appreciate it. Donations coming in hot right now. I really... I'm so thankful for you guys. Thank you so, so much. Um, let's see. Michael Piz with the fiver. UFL? Yes, UFL season. But I don't have cable, so none of the streams work. Oh, that stinks. You need cable to log in for them. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know where to look for, like... Because Streamies doesn't have it. Streamies does not have it. Hassan Rack traded to the Jets for 2026 conditional third-round pick. Becomes a second-round pick based on playing time. Yeah, I have to do a JJ News video on that. It's a good trade for the Jets. Obviously, a very good pass rusher. Bit on the expensive side, but, um... And the Eagles have his replacement with Huff, but never too many good pass rushers. Jets are building something. If they can stay healthy. Handoff, second and goal to seven. Sarah's comment says, Son, Travis Hunter, and some other players will be Eli Manning's situation, not want to go to certain NFL teams. That was a very unique situation. I don't think Sanders is good enough to do that. And Hunter's definitely not a positional player. Yeah, there's no way. 
Second goal to seven. Birmingham, their first drive in it with a turnover. Let's see what happens here. Second down. Handoff up the middle, down to the four yard line is Marable. Gain of three on the play, brought down by Jamal Carter. Brings up third and goal at the four. Who will Russell Wilson play for in 2025? I mean, I think the Steelers are trying to sign him to a long term contract. So my guess is Pittsburgh. My guess is Pittsburgh. But they're interested in Michael Penix for some reason. So I don't know what Pittsburgh's doing. I'll do a video on that too on JG9 News. Yeah, if you want to hear my thoughts on like like any current events that happen in the NFL, um, I do a lot of videos on JG9 News. Um, update that channel all the time. Um, so go check that out on your subscribe to JG9 News. Third and goal. Shotgun. Five wide. Play clock's at zero. Play clock is at zero. Delay of game. That's a bad delay of game penalty. That's a bad delay of game. Birmingham does not take a timeout. They go back five yards and set at the four, maybe four down territory. It's at the nine. Thoughts on parts three and four on quiet on the set. Oh yeah, because I didn't I didn't talk about that before. Um, I'll talk about after this um after this possession's over. But yeah, no, I I loved it. Haunting. Chilling stuff, but, but great doc. Third down, Corral trying to escape the sack, trying to avoid getting hit. He's gonna fire out of bounds, incomplete pass. Avoids the sack for the moment, tries to make some magoo magic happen, but Unable to do so. It brings a fourth and goal. You maybe would have gone for it if it was at the four-yard line. But obviously, the delay of game changes the plans completely. Chris Blewett, the former pit kicker. Who was with the Uf US of the last season. Obviously, new kicker in Birmingham. Brandon Aubrey was the kicker last year. It was money. 14 for 15 on field goals. Obviously, we know what happened to him. He got signed by the Cowboys. He became a first-team All-Pro, one of the best kickers in football. So, new kicker in Birmingham, Chris Blewett, because they lost Brennan Aubrey to the NFL. Kicked by Blewett. It is right down the middle. He does not blow that one. 12.30 left in the first half of action. We're all knotted up at three apiece. Yeah, I did not know that situation with Drake Bell. I did not know that situation. No, no one should have to go through that. No kid should have to go through that. You know, Blue is the worst aim for kicker ever. It is the worst aim for kicker ever. Will the Bears pass on Caleb Williams? He would have to murder someone on video with multiple witnesses and at the same time tear an ACL for the Bears to pass on Caleb Williams. What monitor am I using? It's a Samsung 49-inch curve monitor. Blue ranks with Shank is a bad last name for a kicker, but you know it's a good name. Is um, there was a quarterback in the NFL, Charlie Thrower. Thrower is as your name as your a quarterback. Oh man, that's that's the way to do it. I remember XFL rules over USFL. Yeah, I'm I'm the same way. I'm the same way. I like the XFL rules a bit better. I like the kickoff rules better on the XFL. Early national championship predictions in college football. Oh man, I mean, I can't predict the playoff because it's just it's too big. But you would think this has to be the year for Ohio State. I mean, with all the talent on that team, if Ohio State can't do it this year, I don't know. Some questions have to be asked about Ryan Day. You think the Bears are going to reach for a UNC quarterback? When's the last time they've done that? They they've never reached for a UNC quarterback before. Have I seen the NBA jerseys swap? Yeah, yeah, I've seen um, I've seen some NBA jersey swaps. Hang on. No, NFL expansion is going to happen at some point. NFL expansion is absolutely going to happen at some point. They're not staying at 32. I don't know when it's going to happen, but... Look, they're going to try and get a European division at some point, you would think. It's going to interfere with the divisions. I mean, if you go 36, you go 36... That's what it's going to be. It, they won't go 33, 34, 35. They'll go 36. 
they'll go to 36 and they'll do either a European division, European conference or something like that. What I could see, what I could see is you could have like 36 teams, a, U, a European division that only plays the teams in Europe. The winner of that division makes it to the playoffs and then they play in America and you have 15 teams in the playoffs. Home field, like the only team that gets a first round bye is the team with the best record. And the European team just joins whatever conference that is and slots in. With that, I could see that. Your best coach named Charlie Winner was a good one. That was a good one. Your Dick Shannon was a great one um, for quarterback. European League will never work. Money talks. At the end of the day, money talks. I mean, debate logistics, but money talks at the end of the day. That's good kickoff coverage down to the 27-yard line. Return on the play by Mangio. So Arlington with the ball at the 27-yard line. These teams have been basically anything you can do, I can do better. Arlington wins the championship. Birmingham wins the championship. Arlington, their first drive, they turn it over. Birmingham, their first drive, they turn it over. Arlington, second drive, they get three. Birmingham, second drive, they get three. Out of all the players that got signed by the NFL through last year's Spring Leagues, who was the worst and the best? I mean, I don't know the worst because... I mean, Magoo was not good with Green Bay. His footwork was all off. Um, Brandon Aubrey had to be the best. I mean, first team All-Pro. I mean, he was maybe the best kicker in football last year. He had to be the best. The give, this one goes to... I believe that's Eddie Person. So, Letty Brown getting the bulk of the carries now. Moving away from Smith. Brings up second seven about the 30-yard line. You know, the Suns are a frustrating team because they should be better than they are. Health is an issue. Obviously, defense. I mean, I like. I thought Frank Vogel was going to turn the defense around. He is not. He is not. How's it going, Phoebe? Welcome to the stream. UFO games cannot end in ties. No, they cannot end in ties. Second seven. Ball is at the 31-yard line. Man in motion. And again, we're doing the game after this. Between St. Louis and Memphis. Screen pass. Caught by Letty Brown. Brown tries to make a man miss. Pushed out of bounds. Did he get the first? It's going to be close. Did he get the first down? Letty Brown. Actually, I think it's for Florida Gators. I mean, Billy Napier is still the head coach. It's a brutal schedule. My guess is four wins. I think it's a four-win team. Even that might be generous. Looks like he's got the first. Looks like from that angle, he's... Well, they're reviewing it. Obviously, they can review anything. You don't have to challenge it. They can review it. As of now, it's third and one. Perez, six for six to start off. So let's see. Oh, we got we got these uh, we got the graphics. Here we go. That is short, short by five inches. So third, and you know, in honor of that, third and five inches. That's what we're gonna do. You know, there's no way Kalen Clark plays in the big three. There's no way. I know five million is a lot of money, but I don't see it happening. Right, third and five inches. Is there enough talent at QB for four more teams? I mean, not not like a ton, but at the end of the day, again, money talks. Third and five inches. Handoff. First down. Letty Brown, best run of the day for the Renegades down to the 48-yard line. Gain of 11. Yeah, my bold prediction, based on how everything is played out in, on the men's side for the tournament, if Iowa makes the final, if it's Iowa-South Carolina in the championship for the women's side, and Duke does not make it on the men's side, the women will draw higher than the men. The women will draw higher than the men. First down ball at the 48-yard line. Bernard in motion. Perez play action. He's got plenty of time. Now he's going to look to run. And pocket closed pretty quickly. Gain of one on the play. 
Speaking of former NFL players, Taco Charlton in on the stop. The former Cowboys first round pick. The former Michigan man. Second and nine. How's it going, K. Hansen? Welcome to the stream. Yeah, Kurt Manifee does play a flick for the UFL. He's their main guy. He's the main guy. I'm not crazy about Manifee as a as a um, play-by-play -play man, but he's the main guy for, on the um, on the Fox side. Time to go back to the old Oilers uniforms permanently. No, I think I. I mean, they were clean, but they're better than what they have now. I just, I, I'm not. I wouldn't do that. It's not their identity. It's not their identity. Inkley pass first Inkley pass of the day for Perez and ten uh, target should say Tyler Vaughn's brings up third and nine. Two guarantees for the NFL in 2024. Every Lions home game will cut to that old season ticket holder a million times, and the announcer will continue to call every play on fourth and one a tush push, <laughs> brotherly shove or something. <laughs> Watching a listener from Albany, Georgia. How's it going, Blazer? Thank you for tuning in. Enjoying the cool setup of all the old school helmets. Thank you so much. Yep, this this was a lot of fun to put together. Third and nine. Perez steps up, fires, deep shot. He's got a man caught. Ten, five, touchdown. Isaiah Winstead. And the Renegades score the first touchdown in the UFL this season. 9-3. A dime from Perez to Isaiah Winstead. Winstead is winning. And the Renegades are on the board with the touchdown. Now again, new rule, rules. It's not USFL rules. It is NF, or, or XFL rules, I should say. Um, in terms of the extra points. So you can go for one from the two, two from the five, three from the ten. The first UFL touchdown. And I think most teams are going to opt to go for two from the five. Did, he, did anyone see the Mets pay tribute to Army Vet? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not falling for that trick. I'm not falling for that trick. You know, NFL Columbus, Ohio wouldn't work. Plus the college town, too, for the most part. Going for two. Play action. I don't know why you go play action from the five. Lindsey Scott in a QB. And the two-point try is good. It's an octopus for Winstead. It's 11-3. A dot on the post pattern by Perez to Winstead. Again, Perez... The Renegades were not that good last season. And then Perez came in after Las Vegas. The Vipers cut him. And uh, I don't have a Vipers helmet. I have Tampa Bay Vipers helmet. You can see the green helmet. But I don't have a Vegas Vipers helmet. But once Perez came in, the offense really started clicking. And Arlington leading 11-3. With about nine minutes left. Who should replace Collinsworth on Sunday football when the time comes? Um, when the time comes, ooh, that's, that's not gonna be for a while. It's not gonna be for another 10 years, at least. I would say... And right now, I would think Blackledge is the favorite. I think Blackledge right now is the favorite. I'm not sure if that's the right call, but right now I'd say Blackledge is the favorite. My guess is that they're going to... NBC's going to try and make a bit for Kel, for Kelsey. That's my guess. So Birmingham with a chance to answer. Jack Collinsworth will replace Chris. The only reason Jack Collinsworth is still there at this point is because of Chris. The moment Chris is gone, Jack is gone. I mean, Jack got kicked off Notre Dame games. If Doug Pearson coached on the UFL, would he turn a team into a dynasty or would he be a dumb dumb? No, I think he'd turn a team into a dynasty. I don't know about dynasty, but he'd be he'd be alright, I think. As long as he didn't bring Press Taylor with him. If he brings Press Taylor with him, different story. But if he doesn't, he could do it. The, the, the coaches in the UFL are good this season. That's the problem. The coaches in the UFL, like there's no Heinz Ward, there's no like guys with no experience whatsoever. Everyone everyone's good this year. Like there's actual coaches. 
They never won other one games last year. Like, they're, they're established and know how to operate spring football. Like, obviously, these coaches, Bob Stoops, Skip Holtz, can't really complain about either of those. If the UFL became NFL minor league, separate score got me that would be completely filled very quickly because of the point trial. Oh, the score's going to get weird and wacky. The score's going to get very weird and wacky. Oh, that, that camera angle is so bad. I, I don't know why, like, why are they doing a top-down shot? Like, it, it looks awkward whenever, like, announcements are like a top-down shot. You mean Terrell Buckley wasn't a Hall of Fame head coach? <laughs> So I didn't do dumb decisions last year for the UFL because there were so many. How good of a color commentator with Brett Favre? I, I don't think he'd be that good. I honestly don't think he'd be that good. Because the problem with Favre is, is that like you have to be able to break down a defense. Favre doesn't know what it, how to break down a defense. I don't think he'd provide a lot of good insight. I don't think Favre would provide a lot of good insight because he just kind of slung the ball around. <laughs> OJ Simpson coming back to replace Collinsworth. <laughs> Hey, Twitter world. I was at the 14 running, and yes, I was. Kickoff bounced at the 25. It takes a... <laughs> Farrell bounced for the Renegades. And Birmingham just has the full on at the 29-yard line. So Birmingham ball the 29. First down. You know, I, I was at both games this season so far. I'm going to be at the game tonight. I won't be at the game tomorrow because I'm working the UFL games, which will be fun. Um, I'm going to be at the, the Yankee series. I'm going to be at all three games on the Yankee series, so... I'm going to be at six of the first seven. Yeah, the third inning felt like a fever dream. The third inning of the, um, it was the third inning of the Dodgers. Um, oh my, oh my God, they actually did it. <laughs> How did they fall for that? I just saw you think, how did he fall for that? He had a six on the play. I mean, that's like the oldest trick in the book. That's like a Simpsons trick. It's like sending... It's, it's, although Simpson, Bart Simpson would see more butts. How do they fall for that? Oh, my God. You'd think someone would vet that, but apparently not. He had a six. He had a seven, I should say, on the run by Maribel. Second down. The handoff. This time, it goes to Ricky Person. Person down to the 41-yard line. First down. Is there a way to watch this for kind of like an illegal streaming site? Um, I've no problem advocating for that. I just, um, I don't know. I honestly don't know. It's on Fox over the air, but like I checked streaming so they don't have it. Bob, super smoking the greatest college coaches of all time. I'd probably say top 20. If his real name was that, I don't know what his parents were thinking. What was like seeing that many runs being scored in person? It didn't feel real. Didn't feel right. Adrian Martinez, the former Nebraska quarterback, in to run some, uh, in to run this one up the middle. So there might be alternating between Matt Corral and Adrian Martinez, Nebraska Kansas State man. How was Mike Goldberg's color commentator uh, out of bio? He was terrible. He was better than Goldberg, but anyone could be better than Goldberg. He was terrible, though. Absolutely terrible. Then we've got a false start on the play. So some dirty laundry, if you are a member. Again, thank you so much. Use those flag emojis now. Yeah, Jason Eck is one. Again, this year, as a member, one of the perks you get is I swapped out some of the emojis that weren't used a lot. Um, so we could use every single UFL team. So you can always show your support at any time. Just like that. And anytime there's a flag, you can use those flag emojis. First of 15. Balls at Birmingham's 49-yard line. Play action. Corral back in the game. Or no, Martinez, I should say. Still in there. We're going to run. He's got the first down, the 33-yard line. There's definitely more explosion with Martinez in there. This gives you a bit more in terms of the um, in terms of the mobility. Gain of 18 yards on the play, first down. Adrian Martinez. Seemed like he was in college forever. He was um, at Nebraska for a bit. Kansas State in 22. 
now getting a shot in the UFL. It's an interesting QB room. Martinez and Corral, obviously. Let's see. Yeah, I'm trying to get to every question. I'm trying to get to everything that I possibly can. 104 people in the stream. Thank you so much. Martinez slant route, and that is incomplete. Looking for a flag. Not going to get one. Deion Kane. Skip Holtz arguing that he was being held up. It seems like a lot of the players thought so, too. It looked like P.I. from on the initial glance, but let's see. Yeah, they definitely got the shoulder pad. I don't know if it impeded the route, though, but they definitely got the... Yeah, oh, yeah, no, he's tugging the shoulder. Yeah, no, that, that should have been called. That absolutely should have been called. Absolutely was a penalty on Delonte Hood. Not going to call it. They're not going to waste their challenge on that right now. Second and ten. Martinez stumbled on the break, and that is incomplete. So back that game, we pass this Marcus Baugh, the intended target there, just stumbled on the um on his on his break. Brings up third and ten. So we might see a lot of teams see this where the alternate QBs, at least at the start, to see who gives them the best chance. Remember, no real preseason. If there was, it was behind closed doors. A5 Hogan versus 2000 Rock. Ooh, I'm taking Hulk. I'm taking Hulk. Chance of Montreal getting another um, MLB team. I would say 5%. Third and 10. Martinez over the middle. Ball is caught. First down on the play. Deion Kane holds on to that one. You know about, say, 13 yards on the play it looked like? Yeah, let's call about 12, 13 yards. Balls at the 21 yard line. If Boise keeps growing, could they get MLB, NFL, MLS, NBA, or NHL? Um, they have to grow a lot. The media market, the media market suck great. The media market suck great. They gave up the middle. Nothing really doing there. No gain. Bottled up by Jalen Redmond. Number 90, and Will Clark it on the stop as well. Brings up second and 10. 85 Hogan versus 85 Bears. No one was getting past the 85 Bears unless your name was the Dolphins. Plus, the 85 Bears had a song. Hulk Hogan does not have a song. We do the games on Sunday. I'm doing every game this week. Every game this week. And you can see the bottom, the tickers on the bottom line. You can see everything that's happening. Second and ten. Out route. I think that that was a miscommunication. I think the receiver there, Amari Rogers, the former Clemson man, the former Packer, the former third round pick that didn't really work out in Green Bay. Especially as a punt returner. I think he was running a curl route and Martinez was throwing an out route. You know, the Rocking and, and Danny, they're they're there for the publicity. They won't be there for the third or fourth quarter. 96 Bulls or 96 NWO? I'm taking the Bulls. 85 Bears or 96 Bulls? <laughs> 85 Bears versus 85 actual Bears. Who is? Um, I don't think actual Bears know how to throw a football. So, but then again, now they do most quarterbacks that the Bears have had. That passes through the hands. Intercepted! Intercepted on the play! Gary Jennings, the intended target! And for the second time today... The Stallions turned over on an interception. Arlington football. Deron Lowe has the Stallions feeling low right now. Ball will be moved out of the 25-yard line. First down for the Renegades. They get a defensive stop through the hands of Gary Jennings. That is twice now. Maybe a bit of a high throw, but... um. You gotta catch that ball. At the very least, you gotta get your hands on it. At the very least. That is twice now that Birmingham has turned it over on interceptions where they cannot um, hold on to it. Plays that probably should not have been picks. How Renegades score eight? Uh, Octopus by Isaiah Winston. They went for two from the five yard line. 
So first attempt, a 25 yard Remember, under the new UFL rules, under the rules, all touchbacks, punts, kickoffs, um, interceptions, they go to the 25. Well, that wasn't Corral who threw that. That was Andrew Martinez. But still, yeah, the, the Stallions are not getting help from their receivers. I'm, I'm going to tweet it out really quickly. Hang on. Just reading something out. Again, as you can see on the twi on the ticker, I combined Twitter and ticker to do Twicker. <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter. There we go. Um, at Jawagar Nine NFL, we have over four thousand followers on there, which is just nuts to me. Thank you so much for the love and support, there, guys. Does Angel Reese or Kevin Brink go number two overall? I would say Brink probably goes two right now. I'd say Brink goes two. Should some CFL teams have contracts ending join the NFL or the UFL? What do you mean by, like, contracts ending? Like, like, I'm not sure that's how it works. Um, no, I, I think just travel-wise, customs-wise, it, it would be it would be too much. It'd be eating money at that point. NFL of relegation? No. No. NFL, of the four sports, like the, like the five sports, I should say, of the five, that's the one where I'm, like, very against relegation. It'll never happen for anything besides maybe MLS and like a closed system, maybe, but that's even pushing it. Miami Tuesday, I have somebody to send it. All right, I will. I will do that. Generals rejoin next season. I don't know if, where they're going to play because MetLife doesn't look great. I think yeah, MetLife would not look great because obviously a lot of empty seats. Like, I'm not sure I could fill the lower bowl. NBA playoffs prediction. I am not betting against the Celtics. Well, WMA is fan to Canada. They've been talking about that. I think they're trying to get an expansion team in Toronto in the next three years. Yeah, I think I think Toronto will get a WNBA team. 94 Brazil soccer versus 94 OJ Simpson. I mean, OJ didn't do it, and OJ was like 40 at the time. So I'd probably take the 94 soccer team. <laughs> Any update about DG? I have no clue. I have no clue. I don't know what he's up to or anything. Too wide. Perez takes a snap. Perez, look in. Crawl route, caught at the 30, down to the 34-yard line. Catch there made, first of the game for Seth Green. Andrew Reese is better than Caitlin Clark. Um, that is an unpopular opinion. That is a very unpopular opinion. What the... I don't know if you mean what the heck or where the heck is the Birmingham Bolt. Birmingham is... Um, that's right there. That's right there. AF franchise to be revived? No, probably not. Probably not. Could do cities, but in terms of the actual franchises and the brands, probably not. The handoff. Gain of three on the play goes to Smith down to the 37 yard line. If they could be revived, I mean I, I was an Apollos fan in twenty nineteen, so I would I would say Apollos. Toronto and somewhere in Florida. I think they're thinking about Toronto and Philly. I think they're thinking Toronto and Philly are the, are the next two when they do eventually expand. All right, we are at the two minute warning. You know, that's the other XFL team from 2001. Yeah, so we'll just go down the line in terms of the helmets since we have the two minute warning. Um, so just down the line in terms of the helmets. Let's see. XFL 2001 is on this side. Everything's neatly organized. Birmingham. Chicago, LA, Vegas, Memphis, Maniacs, New York, New Jersey, Hitman, Orlando Raiders, San Francisco, Demons. XFL 2020 helmets of teams that no longer are in the league. Rest in peace to the Tampa Bay Vipers, the Seattle Sea Dragons, the Los Angeles Wildcats, and the New York Guardians. Obviously, Gardens went to Orlando last season, and Tampa Bay moved to Vegas. Now we have the old USFL on the, on the 80s side. We've got Arizona, Birmingham, Chicago, Denver Gold, Houston Gamblers, Jacksonville, LA Express, Memphis, Showboats, New Jersey Generals, New Orleans Breakers, so they play in a bunch of different cities. 
Oakland Invaders, Oklahoma Outlaws, Orlando Renegades. We got the Maulers of not just the, the USFL from the 80s, but the Maulers from last season with the black and gold color scheme, which I like a lot better than their, their purple and orange. And we got the Philadelphia Stars. And then we got... Oh, wait, now it got blurry. Hang on. I think my finger pointed it. Um, best XFL logo from 2001 and the best units. I, I guess the best units were the extreme and the best logo would probably be Birmingham. Although I do like San Francisco. San Francisco logo was nice. I do like that. Um, Chicago is also good. I, I'd probably say Birmingham was the best. Actually, no, Chicago. Chicago is my pick for the best logo. And we also have for the other USFL helmets because obviously I, there's more than 16 teams that played. We had San Antonio Gunslingers up here. We've got the Tampa Bay Bandits, and we've also got the um, the Washington Federals, a white helmet and a silver helmet. And then in, in terms of these, we got XFL, USFL, we got DC, San Antonio, St. Louis, Houston, Memphis, Michigan, and then I will always swap out, so it will be the top, the teams playing will always be over here. So we're going to do Arlington and Birmingham for this. Uh, the game that starts in two hours, not even 90 minutes. On Fox, that we're going to do after this, between Michigan and St. Louis. I'll take these two helmets, put them up there. So, yeah. Yeah, I think they'll bring back some of the USFL teams. I could see it. I could see them bringing back some teams. Um, New Orleans, I could see. New Orleans, because... New Orleans, I could see them doing it. I'm, I mean, I visit... Like, I've seen Tombstone, like, GeoGuessr, but, like, never been there, like, in person. First down, quick pass, caught at the 45-yard line. Brought down on the play after a gain of eight. Scooby Wright, the former Arizona linebacker. Second and two, he had Renegades two timeouts. Stallions get the ball to start the second half. Perez, deep shot, overthrown, incomplete pass. Clock stops, sonically passes um, inside two minutes. In the first and the second half, it stops inside two minutes. So, don't have to worry about that. Tyler Vaughn's the intended target there. New Orleans WNBA, um, they could, I mean, they, they could conceivably. Um, it won't be for a bit, though. It won't be for a bit. I think definitely you're looking at Philly and Toronto as the next two. That's my guess. If I had to guess on a team that comes back next year, I would probably say Pittsburgh and New Orleans would be the two. If they bring back two USFL teams next year, hopefully they get to that. Slant route, incomplete pass. No flags on the play. Bit behind his receiver. Still one that you expect a guy to catch. Broken up there. Let's check this again. Yeah, bit behind. Smith, not a great half for him, obviously. It's not done a whole lot in the running game. Lorenzo Burns on the coverage. Bit behind. Bit behind. Not the best of throws, but still one that you expect a guy to make. Fourth and two, and they are going to punt this ball away. Marquette King, who was with the Renegades last season, the former NFL punter with the Raiders. This one will be fielded at the six-yard line, taken out to the 10, and goes down the 15-yard line. Amari Rogers, who had his struggles in Green Bay as a punt returner, fields that one. And Birmingham will take over the 15-yard line with a chance to double up. Toronto T-Rexes. I mean, you have the Raptors. Yeah, what would the Toronto team be? Toronto Raptors... Torontosaurus. Torontosaurus. Toronto source. There you go. Just do like a um do like a soccer team, Toronto source. If a player was a GM, should that factor into a Hall of Fame case? Um No, I think it's gotta be two separate careers. For the NFL at least, for two it's two separate careers. My first half of seventeen and, and something that Arlington doesn't like. There was something that Arlington did not like. So they will burn a timeout.
Spring football Mount Rushmore. Steve Young, Jim Kelly, Herschel Walker, Reggie White. That's a pretty good Mount Rushmore. No complaints from me on that one. No complaints from me on that one. Packers players reportedly hoping they don't get that opening night game to Brazil. They don't want the long travel all the way from Wisconsin. Yeah, I mean, it would be. it's going to be a long travel no matter what. I think it's going to be Cleveland. They, they're saying it's between Cleveland and Green Bay. I think it's going to be Cleveland. I think they're... Um, a Cleveland player spilled the beans and said, we're playing in, in Brazil next year. So I'm assuming it's going to be Cleveland. Game is on Fox. This game is televised on Fox. Martinez in a QB still. Martinez dancing around, looking to avoid the sack, and he cannot. Down he goes at the 15-yard line. Willie Taylor on the sack. We'll see how Birmingham wants to manage the clock. They have all three timeouts. But on a play like that, considering how pinned back you are, you get the ball to the second half, you might not want to take any chances. It's still a one-score game. Second and 11. Slant route. They're going quick. And now it's caught. Now I think if you're Birmingham, you can take a timeout. And they do. Skip hold six to timeout. First catch of the game for, for Williams. Oh, no. They're not taking the timeout. They are not taking the timeout. First down at the 29-yard line. Give two more. Martinez keeps himself at the 50. Gain a 21 on the play. Martinez a bit slow to get up. He is still down. He is still down. I think that will force a timeout for Birmingham. Gain of 21. Passing track for Martinez, um, I'm assuming it's like 11. I don't know. I don't know the exact uh, exact thing. Yeah, he he was in pain immediately on that one. Michael Piz with a fiver. Thank you so, so much. Really appreciate it, man. Really appreciate all the donations. Thank you so much. Uh, best football name ever, Bronco Nagurski. Fight me. That's a, that's a good name. I'm not, I'm not going to complain about that. I'm not complaining about that. That is a good name. So Matt Corral, after going out for a bit, I don't know if they were going to alternate between Corral and Martinez, but now they have to go with, obviously, um, they have to go with him. Birmingham forced to take an injury timeout. 40 seconds. Ball well, at the 49-yard line of Arlington. Man motion is person. Corral. Looking. He's going to run. He's at the 45. Corral slides down the 42-yard line. That doesn't stop the clock. Figure Birmingham. Birmingham has two timeouts. Why, why are they? Oh, no, 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 no. Birmingham. No. It's too early for a dumb decision. It's too early. Oh, my. They just wasted so much time. Second timeout. Oh, my God. Birmingham, why would you waste that much time? You could have called the timeout... You could have called timeout 33 seconds. I get if it was a first down because it stops the clock for the moment, but oh my goodness. Okay, they put back two seconds, but still, that's eight seconds they wasted. That is eight seconds that they wasted. Birmingham has one timeout left. Oh my goodness. Why? They wasted another play. They, they wasted a, a potential play. Yep, UFL edition, baby. UFL edition. I mean, you could have had it with 33 seconds. Now you have a 25. That's maybe two passing plays. At the very least, you have one play. All right, second and one, ball at the 43. Four wide, two on the near side, two on the far side. Timeout Arlington. There's something they don't like defensively. So they will burn their final timeout. Yeah, it's so good to be back. Welcome to Dumb Decisions. Craig Ironhead Hayward. That's a great one. That's a great one. The best spring player ever for each team. Ooh. That's tough. I don't think the Jags have had one. You get Niners, Steve Young, Bills, Jim Kelly, Eagles, Packers. You get Reggie White. Jags don't really have one. You're my favorite comment. Thank you so much, Justin. Really appreciate it, man. Really, really appreciate it. 
AFC South is going to be the toughest division if expectations are met. I would still say the AFC North is going to be tougher, but AFC South is going to be a dogfight. It's going to be a dogfight. Remember when the Viking? Remember when the Vikings tried to relocate to Birmingham in 1978 and 95? I do. Yeah, I did a whole video on that. It's <laughs> a fun video. That's like one of my early history videos. A UFL stream link? Um, it's on Fox. Um, Streamies is not doing the game, so I don't know where you could go necessarily. But we have 150 people in the stream. Thanks so much. Be sure to like and subscribe. Helps the channel out a lot. Second down. Person in motion. Matt Corral takes the snap, looking to avoid the sack. Throws on the run. Ball is a bit too high for his intended target, Benjamin Victor. Third and one. Now you figure here, if you're Birmingham, what I would do is I would... You could run the ball here because Arlington doesn't have any timeouts. So you don't give it back to Arlington. I'm not sure they would do anything necessarily, even if they do get the ball back. But you figure four down territory. You get the first thing, you call your final timeout. If you run it. And if you don't get it, you can just take it into the half. And try a Hail Mary. No, they're going to go empty backfield. All right. I'm not sure I agree with this. Third and one. Corral looking. Corral fires deep shot. And that is double coverage and incomplete pass. See, but now, now you... That's why I would have run the ball there. That's exactly why I would have run the ball there. Intended for Sternberger. Because you're not trying to field goal here. It's 60 yards. If you go for it and you don't get it, Arlington has good field position to set up a field goal for Russolino potentially if they get 15 more yards because... Recently hit from 56 last year. That's why I would have just run the ball there. Would have run the ball there. If you get the first down, take your final timeout. If you don't get the first down, you get to go into the half. See, because now if you don't get this first down here, they're going for it. If they don't get it, Arlington's going to get it back with eight seconds left. You get 15 yards. Russelino can um can hit from 56. Oh, man. I don't know about this. Fourth down. Now they run the ball. And, okay, so they just they just swapped the, the down. Okay. Not sure I agree with that, but they do get the first down. They're not with the sequence there, but the logic made sense. The logic made some sense. Birmingham burns their final timeout. You figure you got time for one play before you have to try the field goal. So you figure quick out route gets seven yards. You got nine seconds left. As it stands, 56 yard try for Chris Blewett. Remember, Chris Blue did make a 59-yard field goal last season. Made some kicks from 50-plus yards. He was maybe the second-best kicker in the USFL last season behind Brandon Aubrey. Why Crowd got taken out earlier? I think they're just trying to alternate quarterbacks. Some teams do that to start off spring football, where they'll just see what they have. Because there's no real preseason. All right, so as it stands, to be a 57-yard try. If you're just trying to get, like, seven yards here. First down, Corral. Can't take a sack. Can't take a sack. Trying a deep shot, though. He's actually got a man. He's got a touchdown, Birmingham. Oh, my goodness. What a turn of events. Deion Kane. Bring in the pain. How about that? You figure they're just going to go with a quick pass. But Birmingham with a chance to double up. First touchdown of the season for Birmingham. And it comes with three seconds left. Get the field goal, get the touchdown, just as they drew it up. It's actually weird. There, there was no safe route. There was no out route. There was uh, They were going deep the whole time. Deion Kane with the touchdown. And it's 11 to 9. Figure they're going to go for two and try and tie it up. Man in motion is. Marlon Williams. Now person in motion. Corral looking. Swing pass. Caught by Person. Can he get in? He does! He leaps. He gets hit on the play by Deron Lowe. But we're all mounted up at 11. What an ending to the first half with three seconds left. Let's double check. Make sure he got in. Yeah, he did. That ball crossed the pylon. That ball crossed the pylon. Matt Corral, first professional touchdown, and then gets the two-point try on the swing pass to the running back. Ricky Person Jr., Birmingham with a chance to double up since they get the ball to start the second half. 
A league without kickers? Um, I I don't know, because, I mean... I mean, I guess theoretically, but it would be... It'd be weird. It'd be, it'd be very weird. You know, Vikings almost went to L.A. Oh, yeah. Mike Pereira taking a look at this. I mean, the... He's not out of bounds. No part of the body's out of bounds yet. The ball looks like it crosses the plane while in bounds. Looks like it got over. That looks good to me. Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, I think it's good at least. They showed the play clock, so I thought they were going to kick it off. Rather, Mike Pereira or Dean Blandino? Blandino. Definitely Blandino. I like Pereira, but Blandino is... um. Blandino is awesome. And by the way, be on the lookout for a 5-point vids video with Dean Blandino. Um, Blandino will be on a 5-point vids vid at some point. So, be on the lookout for that. That should be good. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it up to you guys. Did he get the 2-point try? I will leave it up to you guys in the chat. Do you think that was a successful two-point try? Actually, never mind. They, they confirmed it. All right, never mind. Never mind. They confirmed it. Never mind. 11 all. I figured this will be the final play. Now, I just had some good kick returns, so you figure just squib this ball. Don't take any chances. Just squib the ball here. Why did Baltimore not keep the Browns' name? Because there was a lawsuit about that. <laughs> it was a massive lawsuit with the... This so the Browns got to keep their history. And option poll, they confirmed it. I added the I added the poll, um, and then I immediately got rid of it because they confirmed it as soon as I said that. Yep, they do just squib it off. Always they're looking for some room. Not going to get anything down to the 36-yard line. And we go into the half. The game between the two champions all tied up at 11 apiece. Halftime in the UFL, for those wondering, is 12 minutes, so we'll put 12 minutes on the clock. Um, it's halftime. It is halftime right now. Yeah, that was the final play. That was the final play. So, it's 11 all. Again, after this, we got another game coming up on Fox. It's a battle between the St. Louis Battlehawks and the Michigan Panthers. Another battle between a USFL team and an XFL team. Quick little preview for that one. Obviously, Michigan last season, 4-6, and six, but that North division was terrible. They made the playoffs, lost in overtime to the Pittsburgh Moors. They bring back EJ Perry at quarterback. As for St. Louis, call is the law. They were 7-3 and three last year, but missed the playoffs because the rules were a bit wonky. That North division was actually stacked. So they missed the playoffs last year. But AJ McCarron coming back, best quarterback in this league. Akeem Butler, the best receiver in this league, coming back. This offense is going to be stacked. Do you want to ask you on the history of number one songs entering the 80s? Any songs I should mention in your opinion? Oh, man. The story behind When I'm With You by Sheriff is crazy. Basically, the song came out in 1984. Didn't do anything on the charts at all. Did nothing on the charts. The band broke up. One DJ, like five years later, played it by mistake. Like, accidentally played the song. Listeners responded really well to it, and all of a sudden became a number one hit. The band was broken up for five years at this point. It would almost be like... Oh, I'm trying to think of like a good comparison. Um, it would almost be like if... A Fifth Harmony song hit number one right now on the charts. What teams they got rid of? They got rid of New Jersey. They got rid of the New Jersey Generals. On the USFL side, it was New Jersey, Pittsburgh... They got rid of um, New Orleans, and they got rid of the Houston Gamblers, and they also got rid of the... Why the heck am I blanking? They got rid of five. They got rid of five. They got rid of the Gamblers, they got rid of the Generals, they got rid of the Mullers, the Stars, yeah, that, that's the one, and the Breakers. And then on the XFL side, they got rid of the Sea Dragons, they got rid of the Vipers and the Guardians. Now, my way is... 
you can't do it at karaoke in the Philippines. You you will get killed if you don't do it well. All right. So as a reminder, thank you so much for the love and support. We're doing all the UFL games this week. We're doing a bunch of them throughout the season. Um, any donations really appreciate. It. I'll get to your questions right away. Otherwise, I'm just going to where they see the questions. Again, doing live play with playing color commentary on the games. Uh, we got a brand new look, brand new scoreboard. Hopefully, you guys really, really like it. And again, after this, we're doing the game between St. Louis and Michigan as soon as the stream is over. So we're doing six straight hours of, can't say commercial free football, but pretty much. You can see on the bottom line, all our YouTube members, thank you so much. If you are a YouTube member, uh, you get a lot of cool perks. I actually have to change one quick thing with the, the ticker. Um, where are we at? Hang on. It's actually nice. I can add. There we go. I can add members as, as they get gifted. Adrian Martinez's passer rating is 8.33. There we go. No, Sheriff did not get back together. They did not get back together. But it's funny. Some of the members create a new band called Alias. And they hit number two in 1990 with a song called um, More Than Words Can Say. I don't know why I was blanking on that. And then Waiting for Love is a great song by them, too. How many games do each team play in this league? Ten. Ten regular season games. Let's look at the stats. And again, if you want to sponsor anything, you want your company logo, you want something on the ticker, let me know. Um, you, you see the email on the ticker. You see, again, all the spreads, all the odds and whatnot. Pricepicks.com. Use my promo code Gator. 900% positive match up to 100 bucks. Helps the channel out a lot if you do that. Um, so if you do want to do a price fix, it's a really, really good app. Really, really clean interface. Um, really, really good. And they do UFL bets. They do UFL. GeoGuessr full season? I think so. I think so. Obviously, we won't do Monday GeoGuessr, but we might, we'll we probably do Friday GeoGuessr. Oh, I didn't realize the women's were on right now. I'm going to I'm gonna turn it on. I'm going to turn on one of the, one of the TVs. Let's see the stats. I'm not sure how good the, the live stats are here. Oh my god. They use stats? They use stat broadcast for their, their things? Oh my god. Oh my, they use stat I used this in college. They, they did not use this last year for the um They did not use this last year, I'll tell you that much. Let me get let me get the women's game on. Oh man, that is funny. Overtime tonight's stream? No, but tomorrow there will be. Tomorrow there will be. Tonight, no, because um, I'm going to d game after this. Can't find where to become a member. Are you on mobile or are you on... um? If you're on desktop, you just click the join button. Come here by clicking the join button. If you're on mobile, not, I, I don't know if there's a way to become a member on mobile. But if you're on desktop... Is that Seymour on my TV? <laughs> The Guardians came back before Orlando to Jacksonville. It's funny. I actually think Jacksonville would be a very good spring football market. I really do. Because there's nothing else. And they support their teams pretty well. They support the Icemen. They support the Jumbo Shrimp, the Sharks. I think they could be a very good market. Oh, you're on mobile? Oh, that's why. Yeah, I, I don't think on mobile there's a way to join. I wish there was. I don't know why YouTube has an end to that. I'm watching the UFL games. Um, watching it on Fox and ESPN. Oh, oh, I didn't see the um the, the Duval. There you go. There you go. Um, yeah, if you're from Jacksonville, let me know. If you're a Jags fan, let me know. Um, yeah, 58 all in, in um, LSU, UCLA. Wow. See, it's funny. I would have thought, like, logistically speaking, they would have done... Because you have the two... You have the four regionals taking place at two cities. I would have thought they'd do, like, the Albany... Everything in Albany would be yesterday, and then everything in the other regional with... I think it's Portland, I want to say. Is it Portland? I don't I don't remember if it's Portland or not, but... I would use that for, for that. What is he happening to uh, the press manager in the near future? I have no clue. I have no clue. Um, yeah, I, I have not followed anything with him. Um... After everything that happened, I've, I've not followed anything. Um, any link for the games? They're on Fox. Um, but I don't have, like, a link. Like, there's no, like, Stream East or anything like that. I would... I would link it. There's just... Stream East doesn't have it. Like, I have no problem linking it for you guys. I just... 
It's not like NFL where it's like, I don't want to do that. Hang on. Just trying to get some TV set up. Because why the heck not? Yeah, we got some baseball on. Why not? Hang on. Yeah, let's throw on the Mets. who are trailing 5-2. Oops. Hang on. This is a... Maneuver my arm is still... Yeah, if Critical calls him out, that's different. Yeah, Critical is... um. Yeah, tomorrow the games are on ESPN. Tomorrow the games are on ESPN. Today's Fox, tomorrow's ESPN. Big Jags fan. There you go. Families from Jags live more in South Florida. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yep. Always love up the 904. 12 Pro Sports video quality is worse if you but it's into the crowd every single play. I mean, they, they've been called out. TP, a lot of people call TPS out. A lot of people call them out for their tactics. I think even, even the guy that the guy that worked for TPS said, like, yeah, no, this this company's terrible. Wait for him to make videos with Hobbs and Comet Bind. Oh, jeez. Jeez. I mean, he he did Titanic and he's he's done 9/11. I, I know that because I just because I was bef like that was when I was researching it for that. Um, so who knows? Who knows? I can't watch the games until I break down and buy a TV or add streaming TV to my internet package. But money is tight to try to buy a new car. I I totally get that. Tired of walking everywhere. I'd be too. I would be too. I would be too. You know, save that money for a new car. Save that money for a new car. It's obviously a huge convenience. Oh, he is now over 100k? Oh my god. There's some people that's carrying a treatment to others, it's a scary thought that his cult's following is that huge. That is... He's got 100k now? Holy cow. Oh my god, I did not... Wow. That is... Whew. Did not realize that. 100k. Holy cow. No, she got sports at 100k. I'm really happy for her. That's YouTuber that deserves 100k. She is incredible. Um, go follow her if you haven't already. But she is uh, she's really good. She's been on the stream before, too. She's been in the chat a few times. We've got two minutes left till... Oh, I forgot to put a poll in. I'm a bit rusty. Who, do you, who wins this game? Hang on. Stallions or Renegades? I should say we have a new video coming out tomorrow on JG9. I wish I, I put out a video today. Uh, just didn't have time because of working on the UFL background for this. Um, but we'll be, we will absolutely be, um, putting out a video tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern. I still can't get over the fact that, that, um, that UFL used StatCast for their, or Stat Broadcast for their stats. They didn't use it last year. Will I ever collaborate with she got sports? If, if she wants, if, yeah, if she wants, by all means. Look, I'm always down for collab. I'm always down, like, with something like that, like, absolutely. No, we, we, we talk on Twitter a lot. Uh, 100k subs mean you're officially big enough to get verification mark on YouTube. Oh, I, yeah, I don't know what 100k subs means. Hopefully I get there soon. I mean, it's going to take a while. Um, how did I find out that he plagiarized? So, um, I found out, basically, someone showed me, like, someone said, like, what are your thoughts on this vid that he made, and, like, about, like, Nissan Stadium, and I hadn't seen the vid. So, but I saw him, like, pop up my, my algorithm a few times. So, I, I watched the vid, and I'm like, wait, that seems, like, word for word, like, a Wikipedia article. And, sure enough, it was. And then, after the... And then, like, someone asked me, like, thoughts on another vid. I'm like, oh, wait, that's worth work from Wikipedia article. So it was, like, a few times it happened. And then the whole H. Bomber guy thing happened with James Summerton and all those guys that, that plagiarized. And I'm like, okay, like, how deep does this rabbit hole go? And, yeah. You honestly deserve 100k by the end of the year. Thank you so much, Jason. It means a lot to me. It means a lot.
They know the Brahmas bought out Real Madrid. <laughs> I, I highly doubt that. I highly doubt that. People are saying XFL is a failure. Would I agree? XFL 2001 was a failure. Um... I mean, I don't think I don't think XFL was a failure. I mean, they're still around technically. I mean, I think they would have survived for another season if they didn't merge. I just think it makes sense to merge. Opinion on the narrative voice. I mean, the thing with the voice that like like it was very clear. Like I don't know what his voice is really because he's just reading off of. He was reading off Wikipedia, so like it wasn't his words. So like he didn't really have like a, his own like distinct voice. So it it, it just sounded like a guy like reading off a book report. Yeah, like, that's why I, like, I take a lot of pride in the fact, like, if you, I, you cannot find the stuff that I talk about on Wikipedia. You cannot, yeah, anyone can edit Wikipedia. Like, for the most part, you can find the stuff I talk about on Wikipedia. Now, there are some exceptions, like, it'll be, like, a line or two. Or sometimes I, like, talk about something, like, as a YouTube membership request. Because people in the top tier get acts like, they get to, like, request video topics and whatnot. But, like, tomorrow's video, you cannot find it on Wikipedia. The information. Um, there's a few others. Um, the one that came out the other day. Now, it's funny. There's sometimes where, like, my videos have been used as sources. So, like, my the Wikipedia article gets edited after the fact. Um, and they include my video in it. But, you yeah, know, I don't use... All right, here we go. 65% of you ride with the Stallions. They get the ball to start the half. Down to the 32-yard line on the kickoff. Is Kane. Oops, wait. Gotta reset the clock. Matt Corral in a QB after throwing that touchdown pass. First and 10. Ball the 32 yard line. You know, they completed a full season. They it was not a failure. It was not a failure. First down, 31-yard line. Slant route, play action, incomplete pass, broken up on the play. Steven Jones on the breakup there. Second and 10. You know, I, I got that feeling when he was, like, like reading the articles. It did feel, like, very, like, static, like AI. But, that, again, he was reading stuff, so I don't know, like, what his actual, like, cadence is. Good Morning Football just had their last show on Athletic Network. Yes, they did. Um... We don't know what the, what the heck is going to happen to that. We have no idea. I will say this. I have something planned. I just have to see how my body would hold up. But I do have something planned for like a morning show. But I have to see how my body would hold up before I commit to anything. Because that would be a big commitment. Second down. Over the middle. Ball is caught. A bit behind. But nice adjustment there by Amari Rogers. He had a 13 first down. I ha wait, I haven't seen Grossi's stream from the other day because I was do um because I was working on the UFL stuff and then come back from the D-backs game. Um on Grossi's Q and A stream from last night, history YouTuber named Mr. Terry showed up in the chat. They talked about collaboration. Oh my god, that's awesome. That'd be a great collab. I mean, I love Grossi's streams uh, when he does history stuff. His like World War II PowerPoints and like history PowerPoints are amazing. I would have loved to have him as a teacher. That's a really good teacher. Like, Grossi would have been amazing. Hand off, nothing doing there. Marable brought down. At the line of scrimmage. Looks like that was Will Clark on the stop. Second and ten. Oh, I forgot to adjust the timeout. So give me one quick second. My apologies for that. Yeah, I don't like when people like edit like Wikipedia or like like edit like an encyclopedia to like trash talk and like I don't like it when people do that. It's almost like vandalism in a way. Oh, last week. Oh, last week, not last night. Okay, because he yeah, because I know he had a stream last night. That, that makes me why the last why last week was like three hours. That's a low throw. That should have been an easy completion. Instead, it brings a third down. Kevin Austin, the intended target. Should have been an easy completion. Should have been a first down. When more should be on JJ9 No, it'd be JJ9. It'd be on JJ9. When it happens, if it happens, and I hope it will. Um, if it happens, if it will be um it will be on JG9. Could someone make a Wikipedia page about themselves? I don't know. No. Because no. people, like, no, you have to have, like, a certain level of fame, I think. 
Third down, Arlington sends four. Corral looking through his reads. First read out there, second read out there, third read out there. Now he's looking to throw on the run. Tries to pump fake, makes one man miss, but then brought down at the 48-yard line. So Arlington's defense gets a stop. Willie Taylor brings him down. Fourth and, let's call it, six. Donald Payne also on the stop. Speaking of former Jaguars on this Renegades defense. Brandon Rusnak and Donald Payne. He knows about Karasi Parno 3 and 5, but watches Scooter the most. Huh. You know, I have to fill out a form. I have to fill out a, a form on, um, for Google, for YouTube. I mean, I get it, like, Scooter's videos are very short, so I get that to some extent. Like, Scooter's content's very different from everyone else. That punt is into the end zone for a touchback. Not a bad punt there by Colby Wadman. It bounced around a lot, but it will be Arlington Ball at the 25-yard line. When we get back again, all touchbacks in this league out to the 25. So call it a net of, let's say, 25. Oh, a collab between, like, Mr. Terry and Mr. B? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'd be totally down. That'd be fun. That'd be a fun one. Yeah, like, like what I like about, like, the Clickbait crew is that, like, everyone's content's different. Like, Grassi is more reactions, but, like, Packer-wise. Scooter is more, like, TikTok comedy. Um, Five Point is more general. Tree is more, like, in-depth breakdowns of certain stuff. Five Point's, like, overarching themes. Tree is, like, specific stuff, but same style. And then... Perna, he's all over the place. He's more like analysis, like long form analysis, almost like how Grassi does his his Packer videos. Michael Owen with a five, and thank you so much, man. AG, hope you well, brother. Long rest AG fam. Currently relaxing in San Luis, Brazil. Return on hump day. There you go. You'll know what day it is there. You'll know what day it is. Frank, be with you. Happy UFL season to you, man. We are back. We are back in action. Jolly Olive and Stark Raving. I look, I'm I'd be totally down with that. They know their stuff. They know their stuff. They know their stuff for sure. Thank you for the fiber, man. Really appreciate it. Hopefully you like the new look. Hopefully you like the new look. You got a new look this season for the UFL. Which I'm really, really happy about. Trina's in depth right dance also laughs hysterically like a maniac during the congrats Cowboys fan for the playoff loss. I mean, who didn't? Let, let's be honest. Who, unless you were a Cowboys fan, who didn't laugh after that loss? I mean, that was hysterical. Need the Gecko commercial featuring the Camel to return on hump day. Yes, we do. We do. That was an all-time classic. Geico's commercials have been slipping lately. I'm not going to lie. Geico has been slipping lately with the commercials. The last 18 months, they've not put out too many good ones. It used to be like the gold standard. It used to be the gold standard. You never really know the accuracy of Wikipedia articles, too. That's the other thing. Wikipedia is a good source in terms of... There's a... If you see a footnote. If you see a footnote, and then you click on the footnote, it's a good source. And then you can, you can, you can like, go from there and use it from there. But, like, I just think it's, like, the research is the fun part. Like, finding out new stuff is the fun part. Like, I can't imagine ever doing that. First down, the 25-yard line. Three wide, one on the near side. Or, one on the far side. Two on the near side. Perez, comeback route. Caught. Incomplete, actually. Broken up. Would have been a gain of six. Breakup at the last second there by Lorenzo Burns. How much pressure does destroying have here? Oh, I mean, a kicker is a ton of pressure. Now you add the fact that he's a YouTuber into the mix. So people might view it as a publicity stunt. And you have the fact that he beat out another kicker for the job. Yeah, no, he's got a ton of pressure. He's going to have the most eyeballs on him this week. By far. He's going to have the most eyeballs on him. And understandably so. Mr. Six is coming back for Six Flags. Oh, man. It's been, what, 15 years? It's been a while. Second and 10. Perez looking. And he's going to take off and run up the middle. Gain a six on the play down to the 31-yard line. Jordan Thompson on the stop. Third and six. One from Honolulu. 
Hawaii. Awesome job. Thank you so much, Gregory. It means a lot to me. Happy UFL season to you. Yeah, no, we we do UFL right here. We do UFL right with the cases, and the scoreboard, and everything. I do love this. I do love this. He used to buy craft film one of I did not know that. <laughs> I do love when Tree laughs at five when the Giants take an awful draft pick. Tree wants that to happen this year. Oh, they're, they're going to do something in the draft. They'll do something. I don't know what they're going to do, but they're going to do something. Third and five. Slat route caught. Uh, that's going to be a close spot. Burnett on the grab. He's been the go-to guy on third down. He's basically been their version of Wink Rebet. That's the third third down they've tried going to him on that one. Or they got on that one. And they are getting him in the first down. Am I rooting hard for NC State or is it Cinderella? Or is Cinderella going to be equally as much havoc with prices? No, people don't like Cinderella when they get to the Final Four. The prices are actually pretty reasonable now. But I'm waiting to see what happens. If Duke loses, they're going to drop even more. But I just need Arizona and the Blue Bloods to go. I mean, one Blue Blood's fine. It's if you have multiple Blue Bloods. But I just need Arizona out. First down. Perez. He's going to go down. Loss of six on the play. A slew of stallions in on the stop. Including Taco Charlton. On top of that, Jonathan Garvin. Second and 16. It's so funny, too, because the, um, with the, with the Tony pick, the Jags were going to take him. The Jaguars were legitimately going to take him. And we had, we went with ETN, but Urban Meyer loved Tony. If you see LL Cool J in a deli, don't, I know how to take a selfie. Don't talk about your relative talent shows. <laughs> That's a great commercial. Say so, you now it's swing pass. Ball is caught by Smith. Nothing doing. But flag on the play. As it stands, it'll be third and 15. And you can see the, the over-under on Smith with the rushing yards. 49 and a half. He is well under that. He's struggling out there right now. We'll see what this flag is. Again, prize picks, promo code, Gator 900. Percent deposit match up to 100 bucks. UConn basically a blue butt at this point? Yeah, I would say yeah. I would say UConn, so blue butt. But they're... That's like a more East Coast fan base. It, I feel like UConn is a big East Coast fan base, but they don't have like a huge alumni base like on, like across the country like a lot of these blue ones like Duke and UNC have. No, I love it's a good cool, uh, cool song. I'd say probably one of my favorite ones around the world. Squidward's house or Sandy's dome? Sandy's dome is way more way more roomy. Way more roomy. So much room for extra activities. Second and 30 after the personal foul penalty. Quick little bubble screen ball is caught, but nothing doing there. Tyler Vaughn's on the grab, gain a two. Third and 28. At this point, you might just call a draw, get out of here. UConn's a blue blood, but they don't like drive up the prices. That's what it comes down to. With a sixth pick, the Giants select Joel Nolan, QB, Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, look, if the if the Giants can't get one of the QBs, it's probably going to be neighbors. They won't get Penix. They won't draft Penix, I don't think. But if the QBs go in the top four, I think the Giants get neighbors. Third and 27. Perez looking. Perez... Trying to direct traffic, just going to throw that ball and incomplete and a nice kick there afterwards by Chris Jackson, just to make sure. Fourth and 28. Duke alone, I basically mean bad when I can see. Yep. <laughs> Look, I can't hate on people that root for, for teams that, that they didn't go to school for. I can't hate on them. Like, I'm a Florida fan. I never went to Florida. Then again, I had no team to root for. I mean, the closest team that had a football team to me was in a different state, so. You know, most of my favorite rap tracks, late earlys and early to mid-90s. Yeah, that, that was an interesting time for rap. Interesting time for rap. You know, I could see, um, I could see the Giants taking potentially Brock Bowers if Waller retires. Waller retires, I could see it. The punt fielded at the 20-yard line by Rodgers. Rodgers to the 25, to the 30. He's got some room to the 35. Rodgers down to the 39-yard line. Amari Rodgers gained him 19 on the return. Four is eventually brought down by Story Jackson. 
And the Stallions will take over at the 39. The battle between the defending champions, nothing separating the two. Stallions ball when we get back, 7.06 in the third quarter. ESPN First Thing is good for comedy content, but it's definitely not a show that breaks down matchups. No, that, that ship sailed a long time ago. I feel like it, it was at its peak during the cold pizza era, when it was first and ten. It was at its peak for that. Who win a rap battle, Vanilla Ice or MC Hammer? <laughs> Hammer has actual flow. Vanilla Ice is Vanilla Ice. Hammer has actual flow. Let, let me put it this way. Vanilla Ice, in one of, her, one of his songs, here's an actual line. An actual... If, if, you, if you legitimately think Vanilla Ice would win a rap battle over MC Hammer, here's a legitimate line from one of his songs. Now you're amazed by the VIP posse. Stepping so hard like a German Nazi. Actual line from one of his songs. And it was a hit. I think that ends the debate. Vanilla Ice would get steamrolled in a rap battle. I don't think that would, it would even be remotely close. I don't think it would be... I, I actually think there there is, like... You cannot show cruel and unusual punishment. And that would be, like, excessive punishment. Oh, Hammer's way, the way better does. Hammer can, Hammer's moves. Hammer's moves, Hammer's flow. No, it's, uh, play that funky music. But Go Ninja, Go Ninja, Go is, is good. It's funny, there, there's a guy at one of the bars I go to, like, a, a karaoke bar. There, there's a guy who literally, he, I think it was on America's Got Talent. Um, he didn't make it through, but... He literally just goes to these bars and is, he just does Ice Ice Baby dressed up as Vanilla Ice. Jack Paul versus Vanilla Ice? Alright, I mean, I take Vanilla Ice there. Jake Paul, you mean. Jake Paul. Yeah. Yeah, I'm taking, yeah. Vanilla Ice over England is my city guy and over the, the crypto scammer. Oh no, that was Logan. But Jake still, Jake scam with, with, um, with other business ventures. They, they both scam. The boxer and the... Oh, man. Yeah, Chance the Rapper just fell off. Chance the Rapper fell off. He was, like, the big name. He was one of the biggest names, and then he just fell off. Like, there's corny, and then there's, like, too corny for your own good. And that's kind of what that was. All right. First down at the 40-yard line after the 20-yard return by Rodgers. The give up the middle. He's got some room. It's Marable. Marable down to the 46-yard line. Marable, one of the best running backs in the USFL last season. 524 yards, 4.5 yards a carry. Picks a 15 there on a first down. The UConn champ rankings. Oh, no. Oh, here we go. 111, 299, 323, 404, 514. Yeah, I'd say that, that sounds about right. I will say this. If UConn wins this year, they're easily number one. If UConn wins this year, it's one of the best teams of all time. First down, handoff, Marable gain two. Did I know about DG before he plagiarized? Before I found out about that he plagiarized? Um, I saw his videos pop up on the algorithm a few times. I didn't really watch, but um, I saw his videos pop up on the algorithm a few times. And then like people like recommended me the, those videos. Like, what are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on this? Oh, we said this about this stadium. What are your thoughts on it? Um, so... Once that happened, I became more aware of him. Lil Pump versus Vanilla Ice. Oh, Vanilla Ice. At least you can understand what Vanilla Ice is saying. How's it going, NKC? Welcome to the stream. Thank you for the support on GG9 News. Like, I, I always see your comments, like, when's the next video drop? I'm like, thank you so much for the support. Swing route, caught first down more. 35, 30, 25, 20, flag on the play. We'll see if this stands. If it does, it's getting 25 yards on a first down for Ricky Person. Yeah, thank you for the support on on, on um on the JG9 News channel. What are your thoughts on Reddick? Um, look, I think it makes sense for the Eagles to trade him. They weren't going to bring him back. Um, you got pretty good value. I know it's it's way down the road, but you figure Roseman's still going to be the GM by that point. 
Roosevelt roughing the passer on the defense, so add another half a distance to the goal on that. It should be at the 10-yard line. But, I mean, it's a great trade for the Jets, too. I mean, they're in win-now mode, and they, they need to do it. Gucci Gang didn't hit number one on the... On the um, Gucci Gang didn't hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Favorite TV show if I have one. Ooh. Um, Bar Rescue's Guilty Pleasure of mine, but Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Um, SpongeBob, old SpongeBob, South Park, Family Guy, Simpsons. Oh, man. So good. So good. Um, I would probably say... Old Spongebob, nothing beats that. Megan Trainer had that one album that exploded, and then she had that terrible album with the No song, and that killed her career. I mean, she... I don't know if it killed her career. She had No, she had Me Too, she had uh, Made You Look. Like, she still had some hits after that. Obviously, it wasn't as big as after the first album, but she still had some hits. First down ball is at the four-yard line. Corral. Hands it off. That's Marable down to the one. You figure at this point it's four down territory. Birmingham looking for their first lead of the game. And missed tackle there on the swing pass. I think Birmingham is going to have to take a timeout. I don't know, Arlington's calling a timeout. Arlington, something they don't like, and they are taking a timeout. Could come in handy, especially at the one-yard line. I'm not sure I would do that necessarily. But Arlington's got two left. Again, after this game, we've got the game between St. Louis and Michigan. Streaming right here on JG9 Live. That game will also be on Fox. A bit worried about the start time of that game, just because it's there's 20 minutes left in this one. And that game is supposed to start in 45 minutes. So, we'll see. I have an intro plan for that one, too. Um, I gotta obviously adjust the scoreboard and everything and, and whatnot. So we will see. Caleb Williams' potential will he be good or, or bad on what happened at the Combine and Pro Day? I, I mean, I don't think Combine and Pro Day change anything. He had no incentive to, 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 to do anything. He had no incentive to do anything at, at Combine and Pro Day. There was no real reason for him to have done it. I've seen some at one stuff. Yes, yes, I have. Worst team in the UFL, my guess would be. Mm, handoff. Oh, he's got a huge hole. It's a touchdown on the play. It's Ricky Person, the person of interest there. Birmingham with their first lead of the game. They lead 17 11. NFL equivalent of one-hit wonder. Timmy Smith, yeah, Jonas Gray is another good one. Ricky Person. They really use Maribel in person. There's not a whole lot of corral there. Worst team in the UFL, I would probably guess... I would probably guess Michigan. Let me change the score. Here we go. They're going to go for two from the five. You know, Corral looking. Send four. Tries to escape the pocket. Looking, throwing on the run. Back in the end zone. He's got a man. Two-point conversion is good. Gary Jennings. That's two successful two-point conversions for the Stallions, and they lead it by eight. 19-11. With 4.57 left. Meanwhile, in other sports, LSU up by six with 27 seconds left, looking to make it to the Elite Eight. LSU-Iowa would be incredible for ratings. You know, they're not going to bump the... I don't know what they're going to do. I honestly don't know what, what they, they... They might push it back. They might push the start time back. NFL players cannot play in the UFL in the spring. No. No, they cannot do it. It would be a violation of their contract. Do I think the NFL will adopt UFL as the official minor league? I don't think so. Um, not yet, at least. When they are on more stable footing in like five years, potentially. Sports Talk Chud with a tour. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it, man. Really appreciate it. Greg Cook is the biggest what if 
ever in the NFL. I agree with that. In terms of players, he is by far the biggest what-if. I mean, he was so talented, and and uh, Bill Walsh even said he was the most talented quarterback he ever saw, even more so than Joe Montana and anyone like that. They had Steve Young for a bit. He had Steve Young for a bit. Uh, yeah, Greg Hook, phenomenal player. I mean, he was doing stuff that no rookie was doing. He stayed healthy. Who knows what could have been? Who knows what could have been? Thank you for the tour, man. Really appreciate it. Yeah, Greg Hook, phenomenal, phenomenal player when he was healthy. That's so unfortunate one-year wonder. Should have been way... Should have had a way better career. All right, I'm just going to turn off the fan. It got actually kind of cold in here now. All right, so with that there... You can probably see, like, a little behind the scenes, like, I don't have the helmets of anything where the gap is. I mean, the NFL, like, they're on friendly terms with the UFL. There's not, like, an official partnership. No, well, Andrew Luck wasn't a one-year wonder. Andrew Luck, we knew what he was. We knew what he was. He was a very good quarterback. He was a top eight quarterback. Um, but he had a career, at least. He had a career. Greg Cook, his career was over before it began, and that's a shame. How's it going, Tommy? Welcome to the stream. Well, this the next game will be on... Um, They're not going to be the start time back. This next game is going to be on Fox, though. It's going to be the same network. This may have been asked before. Do you think Miley Cyrus or Nicki Minaj for the Super Bowl 59 halftime show? I could see Miley. Um, Nicki, no. Nicki, no. No chance for Nicki Minaj. No chance. No chance at all. Too much controversy with her. And I, they won't go full rap for, for like a solo artist. If Justin Blackman gets a lot of legal trouble, yeah, he would be a stud. He would be one of the best receivers in football. I think he'd have 10,000 yards. I honestly think he would have 10,000 yards by this point. Uh, my pick for the halftime show, I think it's going to be Beyonce. You look at what Rock Nation does, it's usually um, artists that were big in the 2000s. That seems to be the prevailing theme. The kickoff field is at the 30 and down the 34-yard line. It seems to be predominantly um, black artists from that were big in the 2000s. And Beyonce fits that bill, especially after this new album. Flag on the play. Oh, no, 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 not, not, not ABC. No, I meant, I meant um, UFL. I meant UFL. The um, Memphis game is... Or not Memphis. Michigan-St. Louis game is going to be on the same network. Personal foul on the kicking team. So move it up 15, and Arlington's going to have the ball at the 49-yard line. Nick, should they do Super Bowl again? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They did a phenomenal job with Super Bowl. They did a phenomenal job with Super Bowl. Sal Canelo tangled up there. And I don't think it's the call. First out of the 49-yard line. Who is better, Matt Ryan or Ken Anderson? Ken Anderson. Both very good quarterbacks. But Ken Anderson, I think, has a Hall of Fame case. Matt Ryan, I would, I would not put in the Hall of Fame. Ken Anderson should be in. Matt Ryan, I'm not sure he ever was the best QB in football. Even, even the MVP season, I'm not sure he was the best QB in football. Like, overarching-wise. Ken Anderson, you can make the case, was the best QB in football, like, for a period of time. Gain of four. Yeah, UFL is a merger of the XFL and the USFL. Yes, five XFL teams, three USFL teams. This is this game is on Fox. This game is on Fox. I don't like have a stream if you want to watch it, but it is on Fox. And obviously, I legally cannot show the game. No, Fox... Yeah, no, Nick's not doing it this year. No, the next time it's on CBS. You know, they're not going to do it this year, obviously. Second six, it's a dump off pass to Smith. Smith at the 40. Smith spins to the 38 yard line. First down on the play. Some extracurriculars afterwards. No flag yet, but it's getting a bit chippy. Drew Locke or Daniel Jones? Um, Drew Locke is rare pocket presence. I'm taking Drew Locke. Justin Jefferson or I'm assuming you mean Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice? Oh, it's it's not even close. Jerry Rice over Justin Jefferson. It's not even close. Jefferson or Rasheed Rice? Jefferson. If you're talking Jerry Rice, there's not a single receiver in football that I'm taking over Jerry Rice. First down, the 38, three wide, two on the near side, one on the far side. Play action, Perez has time, fires, middle of the field, and that is incomplete on the post pattern. Threw off his back foot, and it was broken up by Kenny Robinson Jr. Brings up second and 10. 
Oh, my clock was not starting. My apologies, sir. I thought I hit the start button on the clock. My apologies. The clock is all off now. Here we go. Remember last year we didn't even have, like, a working clock? I literally had to manually do everything. Look, look how far we've come. Look at how far we've come. No, it's not It's not 4-4. Four and four. The the Houston Houston Gamblers are not, or were USFL. Houston Roughnecks were XFL. Houston Roughnecks survived. Houston Gamblers did not. So it's 5-3, and three, technically. Second and ten, Perez. Looking to skip the sack. Hit as he throws low, but caught at the 23-yard line. Caught there. By Javante Payton, his first grab of this young season. Payton, one of the better players at times last season for Arlington. Eight catches, 117 yards last year. Made quite a few big plays. Which happens first? Resolution to the A situation, Coyotes getting a new arena, or the CFL adding a 10th team? I'd probably say resolution to the A situation. Because there's there's got to be a timeline on that by the end of this year. Coyotes, that could be indefinite. And then CFL, we've been talking about a 10th team for a while now. I think it would have happened by this point. The give, it is a gain of about... Let's call it two. To Letty Brown, second and eight. You know they went with the they went with the Roughnecks because they had a stadium. The Gamblers are not at a stadium, that's why they went with them. Who was Pierre Garcon? Oh yeah, Colts, and he was on Washington too. Very good player, very good player. Yeah, Timberwolves are in a situation is, is crazy. <laughs> so Taylor's not selling. That's a bummer for T Wolves fans. Hand off to the outside, bottled up, nothing doing. Letty Brown, loss of two. How come an NFL team won't work in Utah, even though the Jazz has success? Because Sundays. Because all the games in the NFL take place on Sundays. That's why. Arlington really struggling on the ground, just like they did last season. You know, I think the, the A's situation, there's a set timeline. There's not really a set timeline for the other ones. Third and ten. Three wide, two on the far side, one on the near side. Perez in the gun. Motioning over is Winstead. They do not get it off, but even before that, we have a full start. So third and 15, back him up five yards. When do you think the first retractable roof stand will be demolished and replaced? My guess would be Chase Field, based on how, based on what Kendrick wants, based on the fact the roof is like not really functioning the way it should be. Um, I'd probably say Chase Field. Unfortunately, I love Chase Field. If I had to pick my UFL team, who is it? Again, I don't really have a favorite team. I would say, like, I would say um, it would be great for the league to play in front of a sold-out stadium at, at um, in St. Louis for the championship. Like, St. Louis is going to be fun this year. St. Louis is going to be fun. Third and 15, three wide, two on the far side, one on the near side. Winston once again in motion. Looks at the same look as last time. Birmingham sends four. Perez looking. Middle of the field. Low throw. And it is incomplete. We'll have to settle for three. Lorenzo Burns is on the breakup. Is that a pretty good game? Was he also going to be Utah on Sunday though? Yeah, but that was Sunday night. That was a Sunday night. And that's also a tourist attraction too. All Star game is, is a tourist attraction. Worst team in sports history? Oh, man. I mean, if we're talking all sports, I mean, Darby County in 07 08, they have to be. I mean, that was a special level of the competent. Russellino, the kick is drifting and it's good. Oh, man. That took like five different paths. That took a solid five different paths there. It looked like it was going to be no good, drifting wide right, and then it slivered in and it ends up being good. But flag on the play. So hang on a second. Offside, on the defense, that will be declined, so nothing doing there. Doesn't give him a first down. It was 4th fourth and 16, so this means 4th and 11. Is this a good game? No, this is a good game. This is a good game. I mean, it's a battle between the two champions, and it's close. All right. It's the 4th quarter. Oh, wait. I botched the timeout situation. My apologies. Um, 
I think I, I misnamed some of the things. So there we go. Only has two timeouts. Fourth quarter, 1914. 17 Browns were, were not as bad as the 08 Lions in the 76 Bucks. NFL teams, yeah, they can recruit UFL players. Yeah. No, you, UFL players can leave the league to join the NFL. There is nothing stopping them from doing that. If a UFL player wants to join the NFL, that's the whole point. All right. That's the whole point. Um, let's put a poll in there. Who do you think wins this game? And again, after this, we got the game between Michigan and St. Louis. Stallions and Renegades. 1914. It's the fourth quarter, boys. It is the fourth quarter. Again, thank you, social love and support. We have 120 people in the stream. This is incredible, guys. Um, and again, you can show your support for the team's play. We've got the Stallions logo. We've got the Renegades logo. We've got the logo for every single team. Here is the witching hour. Here is the witching hour. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, so for the confusion on the U on on what Houston team is in. They just had to do the divisions evenly. Because you can't do a division of five, a division of three. But the Roughnecks are a... They were a XFL team. The Gamblers were a USFL team. But the Roughnecks are the team that are in the XFL. Or UFL this year. The Roughnecks are the team. They're just in the USFL division. If that makes sense. What would the slogans be for all eight UFL teams if Russ was put in charge? Um... Well, Memphis um, Showboats Country Let's Show Off would be nice. St. Uh, Battlehawks Country Let's Battle. DC Defenders Country Let's Defend. Um, Stallions Country Let's Ride. I mean, that's obvious. Stallions Country Let's Ride would be the obvious one. Roughnecks Country. It's about to get rough. Brahma's country, I don't know, Bra Brahma's country would probably be just right. I don't, I don't know how you, what you do for the Brahma's there. I mean, I don't think it was dumb to keep the name for the division. I, I don't think it was dumb at all. It, it makes it, like, brand awareness. Like, hey, this is the XFL and the USFL we just merged. Well, can I only take a price? The reason they're high is because it's a 5,000-seat arena. That's the only reason it's high. When they get the new Arena Mesa, I'll become a fan. If they get a new Arena Mesa, I'll become a fan, number one. And number two, I'll probably buy season tickets because it'll be dirt cheap. Wait, the Brahmas... Wait, the, the Barcelona Brahmas? I... I I haven't seen it. All right, here we go. Kickoff fielded to the 30. Got some room to the outside. 35-40. He's going to be at midfield. And go out of bounds at midfield. Dion Kane. Had two nice returns today. Had that drop pass that resulted in interception. But special teams, he's played very, very well. We'll be at midfield, first and ten. First game of the young season. You see the schedule of games on the screen. Again, next week, Birmingham plays Michigan. Arlington plays St. Louis. Both teams on the road. I'm not doing the Arlington-St. Louis game because that's the Final Four. I'll be at the Final Four. If all goes corner plan, but Birmingham, Michigan next week, two USFL teams. We're going to do that one. That game starts next Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern. We'll be on at 11:45. Happy Easter, everyone! Happy early Easter. First down, handoff up the middle. It goes to Marable. Marable gain of three. Yeah, I have the Stallions winning the game. Um, I just think I'm not bad against Skipholtz. Not bad against Skipholtz. I, my picks were Birmingham and St. Louis today. You might want to spend on renovating the roof. Yeah, I mean, should just go to building a new venue. Yeah, I mean, at that point, it's almost like how it's cheaper to buy a new car than it is to, like, do repairs on the car because the car is so beat up. I don't eat burgers. No, I'm not, I'm not an in-and-out guy. I've heard good things about it, but I'm not a burger guy. Handoff, gain of, let's call it two. Maybe one for Marable. We'll call it two. Third and five of the 45. Promise country, let's fly. That's a good one. That's a good one. I have a feeling Jasmine will be heartbroken on April 18th. <laughs> I have a feeling too.
And that's why a lot of people like love the D-backs too. Because they were they're they still are. They're like a cheap way to watch like your favorite team play for baseball. It's my ticket price are still like dirt cheap. Third and five, looking sideline throw. Caught! What a play down to the 21-yard line. Nice throw by Corral. Caught by Benjamin Victor. Gain of 24 yards and a first down. I've never had a pizza burger. Well, 25 QB class would be one of the worst. Too early to tell. Too early to tell. It's a beautiful throw over the head of low. I mean, it's not looking pretty right now on paper, but still a lot of time. First down, swing pass, caught by Person. Person tries to make one miss. He does. Can he make the second? He cannot. Gain a four down to the 16-yard line. As a reminder, a two-score game in the UFL is 10. It is not nine. Because you can go for three. A two-score game is a 10-point game. Question about the Jags. No. Um, oh, if the Jags disbanded who'd been a favorite team, I wouldn't have one at that point. I'd probably just be a neutral. I'd have a salsa for the Cardinals. I'd probably probably do Cardinals, but... Unfortunately, I don't have to worry about that. Second down. The give. Bottled up at the line of scrimmage. Bottled up there... By Rotini. As we have a... Well, first we have an injured player on the Brahmas. Um, Jalen... Or, not the Brahmas. I, I saw Brahmas in the chat. On the Renegades. Uh, Jalen Redman injured. But I was going to say, we have a donation from Spence with the tour. Thank you so much, man. Really, really appreciate it. Um, let's see what we got. What's on the other screens? I've got Iowa. Women's basketball. I've got White Sox Tigers, and I've got Brewers Mets. White Sox up 6-4, Mets down 6-2. We're over 70 bucks this chat. Holy cow, guys. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. When I go bald? Um, probably not. No, I like, I like having my hair while I have it. I probably will go bald at some point. <laughs> so, savoring the hair while I can. Rooting for the Chicago Jags? Yeah, no, if, if the Jags move, I'm still rooting for them. If the Jags move them somewhere, it's it's some, it's if they disband, which we have not had a team disband since the Dallas Texans in 1952, so not going to happen. Not going to happen. Panthers are my team, but I got the Battle Hawks winning. Got to respect a well-run organization, yeah. Yeah, I... I uh... I, I think St. Louis is going to be a tough out. With that offense, that's going to be a tough out. I don't know who, who's stopping Akeem Butler. Akeem Butler could go for over 1,000 yards this year. I think... So, prize picks again. Promo code 100... Uh, promo code Gator 900 percent prize match up 100 bucks. Akeem Butler, 55.5 is the uh, more or less than on the, on the receiving yards. So, um, again, I think he could have 1,000 yards this year. We can watch the game live. This game is on Fox. This game is on Fox. Think right now in terms of my college search down to Cal State Fullerton and UC Riverside. Leaning a lot toward UCR. Sac State is still an outside option though. All good schools. Can't go wrong with, with any one of those. Yeah. It's a big decision. I, I would say go with your gut. If, if you're leaning UCR, go UCR. Why the NFL moved the trade deadline to election day? You, the further you move it back, the more action you see. Because teams know whether they should buy or whether they should sell. Think about next season taking a little trip to Phoenix, seeing the Blackhawks play them. That'd be awesome. That would be awesome. The Blackhawks are a pretty popular team down here. A lot of Chicago transplants in Phoenix. A lot of people from Chicago come down for spring training, too. Cubs are a huge team down here. Quick little pass to Person. Person looking for the first down. He's got it. Out of bounds of the 8-yard line. Gain of eight on the play, first down. First and goal. Thoughts on the Eagles' next center? Um, yeah, I, I, I think they'll, they're going to try and get JPJ. That's my guess. They're going to try and get JPJ in the draft. Obviously got to improve center with Kelsey out. Yeah, San Diego, they, they deserve an NFL team. Yeah, yeah, next center. I'm, I'm guessing they're going to they're gonna try and go for JPJ. You have a team that's called the St. Louis Knights and they use Fairleigh Dickinson's logo. It's a good logo. Handoff up the middle. It's a touchdown from Marable. 
Marable in the end zone. Back-to-back -back drives now for the Stallions with a touchdown. And the Stallions lead by two scores for the first time today. Birmingham down 11-3 at one point, And now they have been on an absolute tear. Touchdowns on three of their last four drives. They have scored 22 of the game's last 25 points. Do they broadcast some rescue football on the radio in Phoenix? I don't know. I actually don't know the answer to that. Um, I'm not sure. 2017-2024 Super Bowl in the calendar year going to OT. Total solar eclipse going over the U.S. Men's Final Four in Phoenix. History does repeat itself. If it means we get another division title, I'm, I'm happy about that too. Should go for three? Um, nah. Although, the play clock's at zero. Oh, jeez. They botched that. Now, most teams are going to go for two here. Most teams are going to go for two. But this will be a two-point try from the ten now. If this was the NFL, yeah, you go for three. If this was was regular extra points, you go for three. But Yeah, no, you can go for three. Yeah, from the 10-yard line. Well, this is going to be from the 10 because it's a delay of game penalty. So, but yeah, you could go for three. This is a two-point try from the 10-yard line. Looking, end zone shot, needs both feet, and he did not get it. Did not get both feet in bounds. Amari Rogers, unable to get the second foot in. He had control. Let's double check. First foot down. That, am I crazy? That looked good. One, first foot's in. That's, that's good. No, that's good. One, two, there's, he's got control the whole way. He's not bobbling it. That looks good to me. That looks good. Was that a successful? But you make the call. IBM, you make the call. Was that successful? No, you, you, no, no extra point kicks. No extra point kicks. Everything is a conversion. It's XFL rules. That, am I crazy? That looked good. He had control the whole way. I think that's a, that's successful. Hang on. They can review it. I think they will. Oh, no, you're good. Who does Nick Adams hate more, Caleb Williams or Travis Kelsey? Oh, easily. Easily Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey did a commercial for Pfizer. Travis Kelsey um, is dating Taylor Swift. Easily. Easily. Oh, no, you're good, NKC. Thank you, thank you for the love and support, man. Thank you for the love and support. So I think that's a good two-point conversion. But we're going to... Obviously, nothing official yet. But that looked good to me. You got it. Remember, XFL rules were one foot in. USFL is two feet. And they're going with the USFL rules for the UFLs with two feet. But it looked like he got two feet. It looked like he had control. Again, after this, we got the game between St. Louis and Michigan. And that starts at four. But it's 343. And we still have 11 minutes left. So who knows? Who knows what's going to happen there? This looked good to me. Let's see. First foot in. Second foot in. I don't know what Pereira's saying. 90% of you think that was a successful two-point conversion. I'm going to end the poll here. He doesn't lose control at any point. That looks good. I mean, clearly he's in. The, the first foot is... The first foot's inbounds. The second foot's in. Has control the whole way. And they do give it to him. They do give it to him. There we go. I was going to say, look, it looked good from the start. But that's why we have replay. They overturned the call 27-14. Two, 
It was one foot in the XFL. This league, it's two feet. USFL was two feet. XFL was one foot. This league is two feet. NBA team in Birmingham, that would be east or west. It'd probably be west to be with um, New Orleans. Kickoff fielded at the four-yard line. It is now or never for the Renegades, and this kickoff return is not going to help matter as much at the 24-yard line. The first down for the Renegades of the 24. And Nebraska no longer airs in um, Phoenix. 1060, I didn't realize that. 1060 AM. You don't listen to a whole lot of like radio, um, besides Sirius. I listen to Sirius a lot, but you don't listen to a whole lot of like AM or FM radio down there. Yeah, I saw a bit of the eclipse in North Carolina. I don't think I'm in the path this year. First down the 25 yard line. It's a cool thing. Perez, they send four. Perez over the middle of the field, caught first down on the... Actually, no, they say he went backwards. Sal Canella, his first grab of the game. Quiet outing for him so far. Canella, 42 catches, 415 last season. Leading receiver in receptions and yards last season for the Renegades. Been a quiet day offensively, though, for Arlington, especially in the ground game. Still have time. We've seen crazy comebacks before in spring football. Obviously, who can forget the St. Louis San Antonio comeback in week one last year? This time, Perez is going to keep it himself. The running game's not working with the running backs, so let the quarterback do it. Keep it on the option. Gain a six first down the play at the 40 yard line. A 60% phase? All right, that's not bad. That's not bad. 60% is not bad. I have to check what time it's happening. Thinking about road trip into the Eclipse. It's always tough with road trips, though, because if there's bad weather, if it's, like, cloudy or something, then you're completely screwed. And then you just road trip for nothing. It's always tough. They had a Nebraska team score in, Sto in Scottsdale. Yeah, I don't, I've don't. i never seen a Nebraska team score in Scottsdale. Wow, I cannot speak. Equally pass second and... They're going to call it a catch. Actually, they're going to say he got both feet in. Second and five. Gain a five on the play. Look like they were going to really complete it first. Tyler Vaughn's on the ground. Yeah, I've been to Scottsdale, obviously, many, many times. Um, go there frequently. And I... Did he get both feet in? It didn't look like it. I, I don't think he got both feet in. No, that one he did not get both feet in. If I'm Birmingham, I throw the challenge flag here. I don't think he got both feet in. That first foot did not drag. Play stands, though. Play action, screen pass. Caught, first down, into plus territory at the 46-yard line of Birmingham. Gaining nine on the play. Brought down by Charlton. It is Isaiah Winstead. On the grab. We had the octopus earlier. Their MLB team, D-backs. Like the Cardinals too, but D-backs. Season tickets. You know, I, I've not seen a Nebraska team store in Scottsdale. That was what I was trying to say. There's a really good sports store in Scottsdale, though. They've got a lot of stuff from in the past. Perez firing on the run. End zone shot and it is intercepted at the five. Under throw ball, the third turnover of the game. Excuse me, the second one of the game for the Renegades. Picked off there. And that is Mark Gilbert. Said quite the game so far. Had a fumble recovery, has an interception there. So he picks off the pass intended for Payton. Birmingham ball the five yard line chance to really put the ice on things. Put this one out of reach. How do you expect Birmingham to be in the West but want Minnesota in the East? Well, that really has to do with divisions. That's the thing. So think of it like this Birmingham, right now, if you put him in the West and you have him in the division with New Orleans, Memphis, San Antonio, Houston, Dallas. It makes sense. Makes geographic sense. If you put Minnesota in the West as it stands right now, 
Minnesota in the West, they're in a division right now with Portland, nowhere near them. Oklahoma City, nowhere near them. Uh, Denver, nowhere near them. Utah, nowhere near them. Put Minnesota in the East with teams like Chicago, Indiana. They're near them. That's why. Milwaukee, they're near them. That's why. Do they kickoffs will be better in the NFL the rule change? They can't be worse. I can't put, I'll put it that way. Kickoffs right now were basically non-existent. Kickoffs were non-existent before. They basically cannot be any worse. I will respond to that comment. Yes, I will respond to that comment. Yeah, this one's over if the sound's funny. Answer. Even if they churn clock. Honestly, if they, they churn some clock, take four minutes off the clock, this one could be over. I mean, Arlington's offense has done nothing today. Now, granted, they have to abandon the run, which is nice, because they can't run the ball as it is. Again, in terms of the over-unders, again, prize picks, promo code, Gator9, 100% deposit match up to 100 bucks. Let's look at those stats, see what they're doing. The over-under for the, um, for these things. You can see them on the screen. As a Wolves fan, please take us out of the West. Yes. The only dumb decisions, yeah, MLB, yeah, we're definitely going to do some. We're definitely going to do some. Pirates won, definitely, that, that was hysterical. That was hysterical. See, Smith, the overrunner was 45 and a half, and uh, 17 yards for him. Marable, 52 yards. Leading receiver right now for Arlington, 60 yards is Winstead. Matt Corral, 162 yards. Luis Perez, 167. You know, Sean Bain's response to the Russell Wilson question. Yes, he was... He's basically, like... He elaborated on, like, 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 does it, like, impact the cat? Like, like, did the cat factor into it? Like, no. Like, he just stinks. Basically, no uncertain terms. The gift to person. Person tries to hurdle the defender, gain a five on the play, down to the 10 yard line. Again, after this, we've got the battle between Michigan and St. Louis. I have no, no idea what time that game is starting. It's supposed to start at four o'clock, but this game will not be over by that point. And that game is on Fox. So who knows what's going to happen? Who knows? And we'll be this hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. I'm trying to get them out. I'm trying my best to get them out. Um, hopefully, the, hopefully the Pirates and Decision will come out at some point. Because that was hysterical. Pick for UFL champ. I got St. Louis. I got St. Louis against Birmingham. I think St. Louis comes out of the USFL and... Or Birmingham comes out of the USFL and St. Louis comes out of the XFL. And I'm not sure who's stopping that St. Louis offense. At least on paper. Handoff gain of one maybe on the play. Third and four. This would be a big stop for Arlington. First down here for Birmingham. They can turn another two minutes off the clock. Arlington wasted a timeout on something they didn't like in goal line set. And that turned out to be disastrous because not only did they lose a timeout, but then allowed a touchdown on the very next play. Will they put on Fox Business? I have no clue what they're going to do. <laughs> I have no clue. They could push it back to like 412. They could push it back to like 412 start time. Third and four. Do they get it off? They, well, they don't. And then there's a false start. Either way, pick your poison. What penalty? There's a delay of game. There's a false start. Either way, they're going to back him up five. Pick your poison there. Definitely some weak one nerves and some, some jeers. Prior to the false start, you had delay a game. So they are going to call delay a game. Hundred fifteen people in this stream again. If you like what you see, be sure to like and subscribe. Helps the channel a lot. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a moment of the action when we go live. We go live a lot on this channel. And keep in mind, UFL season we are doing pretty much all the games. So if you like this commentary, you like my approach to this, we are doing pretty much every single game for the UFL, which I'm really happy about. Spring football's back, baby. Send four. Corral throws in his own end zone on the run. Caught at the 23-yard line. It's a first down gain of 17. Catch there made by Marlon Williams. And that will keep the drive alive. Don't want to say puts it on ice, but considering the clock rules in this league, remember, clock runs on everything. Even if we pass it. So, 
as long as it's not in some final two minutes. So Birmingham can take this down to about four minutes unless Arlington starts calling some timeouts, which they probably should. Not for not right now, but in a few plays. Handoff, Marable spin move down to the 24 yard line. Who will the Battlehawks and Sounders be playing their respective playoffs? I have them playing. Um, who did I say? I, I think I said at the start. I said Arlington. They're gonna play, and I think they're gonna play Memphis. I think it's gonna be Arlington against St. Louis. I don't think DC makes it with Abram Smith out. Plus, well, I'm not crazy about Reggie Barlow as a head coach. And um, Birmingham plays Memphis. UFL? No, it's not free agency. They had a draft. And it's the same players that they had. Um, well, obviously, it seems it's the same exact players they had last year. It's 10 weeks, and then the 11th week is the playoffs, and then the 12th week is the championship. Yep, UFL for swing them back to the NFL. So it looks like we have an injured renegade. That's the clock stoppage, and that's Vic Beasley, who's been pretty quiet today. The former first-round pick led the NFL in sacks back with the Atlanta Falcons in 2016 when they made it to the Super Bowl. And the do north-south, that wouldn't make any sense, though, because time zones. Wouldn't make any sense to have, like, New York and LA in the same conference. Time zones would be brutal. Half the Lakers games would start at 4 o'clock on um, Pacific time. That is an errant throw. Ten to target on the play of Sternberger. You know, the only 10 weeks, yeah. Yes, I did. When when um, when Tubby was there, I, I was I was at the very end. So the first th yeah, first three years with Scott Cherry as head coach. The final year I went with Tubby Smith. Yes. Tubby is a legend down there. Tubby is a legend. Former alum and the court's named ever him. Ever, no one's got a bad thing to say about Tubby. He was like super easy to talk to, too. Super personable. I spoke with him a few times. Awesome guy. Third and nine. Four wide. Can they get this off? They can't! False start. But even before that, there might have been delay of the game. That's a few times now Birmingham has had trouble with the snap. Why would you be living with the T-Wolves from the East? That wouldn't make any sense. T-Wolves from the East would be better for T-Wolves fans because instead of games starting at 9 o'clock, or nine, instead of games starting at 9.30 local time, they're starting at... 7 o'clock local time. I mean, I would say the Battle Hawks game won't be close, but I think the, um, I think the Battle Hawks win. Third and 14, we're inside five minutes. Clock has stopped. Third and 14 at the 19-yard line. No, there's no tradition with the Wolves being in the West, too. Look, if the NBA goes to 32, the NBA goes Vegas and Seattle, yeah, they're, they're moving the Timberwolves to the East. No doubt in my mind. No doubt in my mind. They're moving Minnesota to the East. If they go to 32, they go Vegas, Seattle. Okay, you have 17 teams in the West, 15 in the East. Someone's got to move over. It's going to be... It's going to be... Definitely, it's going to be... Minnesota. Catch their maze enough for the first. It's going to be a yard short. It's going to be a yard short. Caught by Deion Kane. Needed to get 14, and he got 13 and a half. And I would assume they're just going to pump this ball away. Though I don't think they've had any negative runs. I don't think Birmingham said any negative runs. I honestly would consider going for it here. You can really end this game. You can end the game if you go for it here. 444 left. Again, I have no clue what's happening in the other game. But we'll be doing that once the um once this one's over. They're they're reviewing it. The Archie Manning doc coming? Oh, that's gonna come probably in the next two weeks. I'll leave it up to you guys in the poll. Was that a first down? You know, I think they move New Orleans or Memphis. Because New Orleans and Memphis, like, at least, like, 
there's a geographic fit with the Texas teams. Like, it makes sense. Let's see. I think he got it. I think he got the first. That's close. So he catches it past the line. He's touched down, and when he's touched down, that ball looks like it is at least touching that first down marker. That should be a first down. Okay, so Battlehawks Panthers is airing on FS2. So Battlehawks Panthers will be airing on FS2 and the Fox Sports app. So I will I'll put that game on my put the game on my computer right now. And we're gonna delay the start of that game, obviously, on stream, so I can't do two streams at the same time. I wish I could, but I can't. Um We're doing, but, and they are going to say first down. They are going to say it as a first down. It's first down at the 33-yard line. 84% of you were right on that one. 84% were right on the money. All right. Handoff. This one, it goes to Rogers. Rogers, Out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Gain of, let's call it six. Second and four. Second and two, I should say. All right, I'm going to try and put the game on. On one of my other TVs, just for the moment. All right, so that game is starting at FS2. And we'll go to that game as soon as this is done. Second and two. And that'll be on a different stream. That'll be a completely separate stream. Handoff up the middle. First down at the 47-yard line. And now you figure if you're Arlington, you got to start taking timeouts. you got to start taking timeouts. It's a game of eight. Arlington is not taking timeouts. I'm not sure about this. I don't know what there was to respond to. I don't know what there was, like... I'm not sure what there was to respond to. Yeah, well, keep in mind, like, they had, like, because they didn't, the reason that it was uneven with ALNL was because there was an interleague play except for, like, a select few instances. And you had to have an even number of teams because otherwise the schedule would not work out. So that's why. Once it went interleague full-time, you had to go 15-15. Gain a five on the run. Still no timeouts. Still no timeouts taken by the Renegades, and I'm not sure why. This doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. This clock is just running. This clock is just running. You have keep wasting time to go under. Yeah, over-under on this was, what, 42 and a half, I want to say? We're at 41 and a half. Oh, the Phillies can win 90 100 games. I had him as a 90 win team. Yeah, I had him as, as a 90 win team. Second and five. Handoff. Flag on the play. Came from the side. Someone might have been offside. You know, I like the, um... I kind of like interleague play, like, as select, um... Only select times a year. It made it more special. Illegal shift on Sternberg on the tight end. Second and ten. Well, I don't think Birmingham's scoring again. They're just going to run out the clock. And Arlington is not taking timeouts. Nothing happening right now in the Battlehawks Panthers game. I have that game on a second TV, I'll let you know. And again, we're doing a separate stream for that. So be sure to hop off this and hop on that stream once this game is done. Second and ten. Corral. Start of the game. It's played well the second half. Second and ten. Dumps it off in the flat to his running back, Marable. Marable. Out of bounds. Gain of eight, let's say. At the Arlington 45-yard line. Brings up third and two. And that should take us to the two-minute warning, and it will. I do get FS2 with my package. Yes, I do get FS2. 
I have the package where it's all the sports channels, but it's not anything else. It's basic cable plus the sports channels. Third and two at the 45-yard line. When we get back, again, after this, we're going to do the Michigan game. And I will have that stream set up, lined up, and ready to go for there. Um, actually, I changed some stuff right now, because why the heck not? Um, let's adjust the, the betting odds for this. Okay, let's change the betting odds. Let's get those in. So you want to see the lines for that? Go check that out. And remove that from there. In terms of the over-unders, again, prize picks. 100% um, deposit match up to 100 bucks. You want some over-unders for the Michigan game about to take place at Ford Field. Uh, passing Michigan quarterback EJ Perry 210 and a half McCarron 240 and a half rushing yards Wayne Goldman the former giant man 55 and a half rushing yards for the Battle Hawks and then on Michigan side Wes Hills 45 and a half receiving yards Akeem Butler 55 and a half Darius Shepard 45 and a half for the Battle Hawks and then on Michigan side Trey Quinn 44 and a half and Jordan Sewell is 38 and a half I can't talk about soccer on another channel. I just don't want to spread myself too thin. I mean, I already have so many, like... I have already scaled out as much as I possibly can. If I can, um... I've already scaled out so much. Like, I'm trying. If Rid if you weren't riddled with injuries last year, where you made the playoffs, I mean, I think Trevor would have been healthy enough to win at least one of those games at the end. Then again, the defense was garbage last year. The defense was hot garbage. So... I'm going to say no. I mean, maybe we win the Bengals game. Maybe we win the game against the Bengals. But we don't beat the Browns. Defense made Flacco look great. We don't beat the Bucks. They were on another level that day. We don't beat the Titans because they scored a crap ton that day. You have so much knowledge of the series. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I like doing my prep work beforehand. Call these like real games. Call these like real games. Favorite USFL slash XFL helmet I have? Ooh. Um, besides the custom one that, that, that a fan made me with the Brahmins, like, that was special to me. Um, I love the Memphis Showboats helmet. I think that looks sick. And the, the Jacksonville Bulls, just because that was the, uh, one of the first ones I got. Okay, so, we're at 203. Arlington called timeout. And it will be a first down on the play with 156 left. All right. Game is kicked off. St. Louis, Michigan's kicked off. Now we're at the two-minute warning. And Michigan, meanwhile, going down on the kickoff return to the 41-yard line. All right. So Arlington has one timeout left. You know, I love the UFL. I, I love some spring football. Arlington, one timeout left. Why are they missing helmets? They're not missing. It's more of my head is covering them. So I just figure there's no point in me having helmets. Here. Plus, this, these are all the, the helmets I've got. For XFL, UFL, and USFL. So Arlington, one timeout left. Again, the Michigan game has started. We'll get to that after this game is done. In that game, currently airing on FS2. Perry, almost intercepted. That's almost a pick six to start off. Almost a pick six to start off. Yeah, I'm going to call both games at the same time for now at least. For now. For now, we're going to call both games at the same time. Because why not? Yeah, Perry, that ball was bad down on the slam pass. All right, so again, that game's on FS2. We're going to call both games at the same time until this game's over. Then we're going to hop off this game, start the next stream with Memphis and Michigan. i got to set some things up, and I'll be good to go there. Second and 10. Ball's at the 41-yard line for Michigan. EJ Perry under center. Too wide. They give up the middle. Nothing doing there. Battlehawks all over it. Loss of four on the play. Feeney, Travis Feeney blows up the play. It's third and 14. West Hill's going absolutely nowhere. I, no, they don't, they didn't make Vegas. I have Tampa Bay Vipers, but I don't have Vegas Vipers. 
I was at 15-9. Yes, I was at 15-9. 3.34 left in the first. Perry, they send four. Perry pressured. Escape's going to look to take off and run. Can he make a man miss? He cannot. Will they get the face mask penalty? Ball comes out at the very end, and the Bell looks to cover inbounds. Lots of, lots of sort out here. Did the Bell looks to cover inbounds. There's a flag on the play. It might be a face mask. It's Battlehawk ball. They're saying that he fumbled inbounds and the Battlehawks covered inbounds, but this might be a face mask on the Battlehawks. We're going to see. All right, meanwhile, first and 10 Birmingham game, we're back. Oh, yeah, Draymond, yeah, talented, but big attitude problem. Personal foul. It is a face mask on the defense, so free first down for Michigan. They're going to be past midfield. Meanwhile, we're back in this game. First and 10. Ball is at the 42-yard line. Under center. The pitch, it goes to Person. Person, stay in bounds. If you're Person, Person will stay in bounds but gain one yard. If you're Arlington, will burn their final timeout. And they will. Arlington, no timeouts left. I figure this one's pretty much over. I figure this one is pretty much over. As the Stallions, they can basically take this down to 20 seconds even without getting a first down. They're up by two scores. You can just watch the games on NFL Plus. You can't watch the game show. Right now, if we won the Bengals game, the answer would be we made the playoffs. Yes, but I'm, I'm not sure if we win that one. I'm, I'm not sure if we win that one. Because Beathard didn't play bad in that, in that game when he came in. Second and ten now in the Michigan game. Perry... Screen pass. It's a low, but it's caught by Hills. Hills brought down at the 43-yard line. Tripped up there by Willie Harvey. So brings up third and 13. You have a Vipers backdrop they used during events and stuff. Had, you had it when you got laid off and never made a residence to return it. That's going to be some nice memorabilia really then. Pensacola, NFL team? No, not a chance. Not a chance. They would do Orlando before Pensacola, and then they would never do five teams in Florida. Second eight. Balls at the 40. Marable handoff to the 38-yard line. Brings up third and six. Meanwhile, in the St. Louis, Michigan game, third and 11 for the Panthers at the 43 yard line. Perry drops back. They send four. Perry looking, has time. Deep shot, sideline, batted down. Incomplete pass, intended target on that play was John Hightower and broken up there by Brandon Sebastian. Meanwhile, back in this game, third and five. The give. Marable down to the 35-yard line. Brings a fourth, and let's call it three. Post to return one night. We were all going to have dinner, but none of the managers showed up. All right, then there you go. There you go. You... You're miss I'm missing the Birmingham Blast. I'm like, what a name. No one thought that through. The game is at Ford Field. No, that game's at Ford Field. All right, fourth and three. We'll see. Stallions are not going to try and draw them off side. They're going to... I'm assuming they're just going to call timeout with one second, and they are. So Birmingham will have two timeouts left. This will be a 50... What are we calling it? 50... Something yard... 53-yard try. I don't know if I would do this. I don't know if I kick the field goal here. I, I would go for it here. Fourth and three, I, I would go for it here. Kick the field goal, you risk a block, and on top of that, um, you know, you can score. It doesn't make it anything more than a two-score game. You still have to kick it off. And Arlington's had some good kickoff returns. We've seen some nice kickoffs already this season. I don't think Arlington's driving down the field twice in 27 seconds. I'm not sure I'd try the field goal here. Even if you get it, I'm not sure it's the right call. Low snap kick is up, and that is off the upright. No good. Chris blew it. Blows it there. From 53. Arlington ball. So if you have the under, you're loving life right now. If you have the under, you are loving life right now. Blew it off the post. So we Arlington ball. First down.
I think someone had the under in this one. I think someone had the under. They're probably... Probably sweating right now. Who do you think will win in Simply Women's Tournament? I had Scar winning, and I've nothing's changing that. Nothing's changing that for me. First down to 43. 23 seconds left. Yeah, Dylan's got the under. That helped a lot. That helped a lot. Perez checks it down to Smith. Again, Renegades have no timeouts. Ball's at the 42-yard line after that grab. Gain of 15. Obviously, field goal does nothing to cut it to a one-score game. Got to score twice on touchdowns. 13, 12, Perez takes it. Over the middle of the field, dropped by Sal Canelo. It's had a rough game, only one catch for him after last season being phenomenal. Nine seconds left, second and ten. This one's a, basically a formality at this point. The Renegades will fall to only one. Star South Carolina. In Birmingham, the defending USFL champions will go to 1-0. So in this battle of the, of the champions, Birmingham comes out on top. Meanwhile, St. Louis game again. We're going to go to a separate stream for that one. First down, play action. McCarron looking, screen pass, dumps it off to his running back. Ball is caught to the 13-yard line. Catch there made on the play by Wayne Gallman, the former Giants running back. And now in this game, second and 10, four wide. Three on the near side, one on the far side. Perez takes the snap. It's a quick pass on the flat to Sal Canella. Canella's got the first down at the 26-yard line with three seconds left. I'll stop the clock for the moment. But at this point... That should just about do it. Second and six now for St. Louis. And they... Do they get the snap off? They do. Angle route caught by Canella. Canella to the 10. And that will do it. So now Canella pads the stats a little bit at the very end. But final score in this one. Birmingham 27. Arlington 14. The winner. Of the first game in UFL history, it is the USFL champion from last season, the Birmingham Stallions. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. I will see you guys in about two minutes. Let me get stuff set up for the Michigan stream. Again, that will be on Fox. And, yeah, I'll see you guys in about two minutes. So thank you guys so much for tuning in.